want to navigate to the right page. Um, let's call the meeting to order. This is uh, May 13th, 2019. It's a special meeting of the Woodstock Economic Development Commission. It's not one of our regularly scheduled meetings. The purpose of this meeting was really to have a long-term dis or discussion about the strategic priorities of the Economic Development Commission. Um, so we've had, we've declared this about two months ago, I believe, when we decid decided we needed to have a greater discussion about the role of our policies and procedures, what we should be funding, what we should be looking at. So this is an opportunity for us to do it. So I hope most of the members had an opportunity to review the elements, the meeting, um, <coughs> the information that was actually posted to the website uh, ahead of time. Did people have a chance to see that? There is more information than you could possibly want to read there, <laughs> uh, dating back to, I think, 2015 and 2016. So it was very helpful to get that historical perspective. So for those that are in the room, I mean, that's, uh, our intent was for this to really be focused around that strategic direction um, and to have that discussion. I know there's a bunch of people here, and uh, you're willing to, uh, you're certainly invited to observe. Uh, it was the idea that we would be participating, but before we get to that, uh, we do have a time for citizen comments in which we take some, hey Mika, Hi uh, guys. citizen Hi, comments. Oh, thank you. So for um, the, the members of the EDC seated around the table, uh, you know, it might be helpful to the folks either on the wall or on, over the camera, we don't have little name tags, which you know some organizations do have. That would be helpful, and then if we could actually have the people that are in the room uh, introduce themselves so we could at least know who we're with. So Julia, why don't you start and introduce her? I'm Julia Cook. Anything else? Who well, I am? You're a commissioner. I'm That's a commissioner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mika. Mika Seely, also a commissioner. John Spector, commissioner. All right, now I'm commissioner. Barry Millstone, commissioner. Sally Mil Miller, I'm the coordinator for the EDC. I'm Charlie Kimball, commissioner. Uh, Michael Malik, commissioner. Courtney Lowe, commissioner. Great, thanks. And could we just go around the room? It'd be helpful if uh, so the folks of the commissioners also would know who's here. Great. I am Maria Fedora. I am the former owner. Well, I actually still own that lease. It just doesn't have a house. And I also own the Daily Catch. I have businesses in Boston. I am not a resident of Vermont, but I have spent a lot of fucking money here. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, yeah. <laughs> I'm Mary Riley. And I'm all, all in a good direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on the select board. Ray Bourgeois, resident. Beth Finlayson, director of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Jordan Engel, resident and coordinator for Bookstock. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey Kahn, uh, I have a retail business in town. I also chair the Village Trustees. Uh, Scott Smith, I have 37 Central Colliers and Red Wagon in downtown retail stores. Nick Farrow, Empty Farrow Jewelers in downtown. I'm Roger Logan. I live in Woodstock. And on the telephone we have, I believe, Jill Davies. Is that correct? Yes. Select board member. Select board member, yes. Thank you, Jill. All right. Uh, with that, um, I don't know if we have any additions to or deletions from the agenda. Seeing none, we'd move on to our next agenda item, which is citizen comments. And so I'd open it up to our citizen comments that are behind us. Uh, if we have any comments, and this is the time to speak, and go ahead. Well, um, Nick Farrow, I have uh, just a proposal that I want to leave with the board members, so not to bore everyone with a long story, but it's in reference to um, um, the, the strategic planning uh, uh, in the future, and I know that it's something to do with uh, I apologize. that this meeting is something to do with uh, ongoing projects. Well, this is an ongoing project for the restaurants, mer uh, merchants, and the B and Bs in town. And uh, basically, it's a, it's going to become, if you guys uh, <coughs> approve an ongoing funding policy, um, it's going to become uh, a, a uh, I'm going to we're going to ask for a certain amount every quarter to fund um, an advertising program for the downtown businesses and uh, polling most of them today, not all of them because many were closed, but polling most of them, we, we have like a 95% uh, uh, yes vote today. 
that they would like to see something like this happen. So what I did instead of taking up a lot of time, I put it into writing. You guys can take it, look it over, and uh, as it has the breakdown of what the funding would be used for. And I know no, no decisions are going to be made tonight. I know that, but I just want you to have this uh, for the future. So if you don't mind, I'll, I can hand it out over to you. Great, thanks. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you need. I think there's one more. That's seven. That's three, six. Could you send us an electronic copy yeah. at some point next? I can't. <coughs> but send it to. Send it to Sally. Sally. So put okay. on the website that we've got. It'll go. Okay. Us. So. Okay. Well, thank you, Nick. Is this uh, is this on behalf of an organization or is it um, independent merchants together or is it? Well, it's basically the, the merchants, restaurateurs, and the um, B and Bs. It's a, a promotional. Uh, plan that we put in our store maybe a year and a half ago based on uh, different consultants from the jewelry industry saying that this is what you have to do. And basically it comes down to really not extending out to out-of-state people, which I think Beth and I talked about that, that's the Chamber's job, but it really is extending really an advertising program for the local Vermonters and the Upper Valley people. And it's a TV commercial type of thing where they come in, interview you, ask you what do you do here? what's your product or whatever and then we we put that into a video and that or a TV commercial and that's run the first two weeks of every month for 12 months out of the year it changes every quarter so basically every business business person or restaurant or whatever would be interviewed at some point in time and a commercial would be made for them we've just come back my daughter is a major person who does this internationally we just came back with her from Switzerland and Geneva hired her to do this and I went around with them. It's exactly what they did. And that's what the Swiss travel group wanted. We went around to all the small businesses and it was really, for me, I just stood in the background and listened. It was really exciting to hear some of the stories of how these people started their business in Geneva and why you should come to Switzerland. Now she's putting that, that whole audio together and that'll go on social media and all over. But she does that. That's her business for 15 okay. years. Terrific. Well, thank you. So we'll have a chance to discuss it in greater detail at a, a different meeting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, great. Maria? I would like to add to Nick's comments. <clears throat> Being a 45-year uh, veteran of the restaurant and hospitality industry in so many different cities, towns, and um, hospitality opportunities, the personal value is critical. So, having voted uh, 38 consecutive days in a row for the quintessential <laughs> vote for Woodstock, which made the top 10 several years back, as you remember. You can't market a phantom uh, picture. You can't. It has to. There has to be a real sense to it. So, in the sense of Nick's proposal, I see that that is that is like money money in the bank for the town for the zip code i'm talking about 05091 yep. the amazon you know the brick and mortar they're dying you know a restaurant you can't staff them it's a it's a labor force fight all over the country especially in the northeast uh there's so many different compounded issues that are affecting anybody in a retail operation scott you can't even hire counter people. Yeah, it's no, it's will affecting be, everything. Will this be a grant application, or what? What's the it's, context I, I of this it's, presentation? It's a it is a reoccurring grant application. It's not a one-time instance. Okay. So I think when that's presented, that's probably a good time to have this kind of right. discussion. But but I, discussion today. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So that's I, fine. Th th I think no, that's, that's fine. Keep going. No, no, Maria. I think but I, the, I'm just saying how yeah. how the you can't just market a fake canvas. There has to be a sense of real, something that you can touch. And when you put a real person in front of something that's marketed, that's something you can reach out and touch, which is kind of like going back to the yellow pages, and it's so distant from whatever else is happening. Anyways, thank you. Thank you. Before we get on with the rest of our agenda, are there any other citizen comments? Jeff? Yeah, more, more of a question. I know this is mostly internal amongst you. However, I hope that there will be some point after we hear what you all are discussing that we could ask questions or put some have, have input as well. 
Well, certainly. I mean, the, the process, the purpose of this meeting we declared two months ago is really to have an internal discussion among the EDC board about what our priorities were to try to figure that out and make those recommendations to the select board. So I mean, that's, that's really the purpose of this meeting. But you didn't answer my question. <laughs> Uh, is there, is there a time when you could allow yeah, but not some, during this meeting not at any point during the meeting this is the time for citizen comments we really the intent of the meeting like other school board meetings or one another is to get on the business with the, the agenda that we've declared mm -hmm. and then we have open things for citizen comments as you do with the select board well, well, but, no, no, my no, point no, is no, that no. hearing your discussion there might be some input after hearing but if you well, don't al I'm going to allow it then. Well, I would also anticipate that this is not, this is also not answering your question <coughs> or disagreeing with Charlie. It's a narrow path. I would expect that, that there would, that these issues would be, um, would be discussed more than just at this meeting. I think mm -hmm. for us to go to a larger group than this and say this is what the EDC stands for, we need to have this meeting. Because otherwise we'll be incoherent. Is we be presenting? This is might be what we stand for. So I think that this won't be the last time. This won't be the only. Th there will be a time when we can have public input and debate that will still be able to shape this. I think we just have to kind of get coherent at the first level. And right. Thank you, John. Is That's that what I said. Nice to say. Yeah, and I, I wish you all well. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. I'm Goodbye. all done. Okay. Thank you. Bye -bye. Good luck to you all. So, in terms of where we are on the next item on our agenda is really to review the EDC policies and prayers. I apologize to people who thought the meeting was going to be something different, but this is really the declared intent. Well, it was an meeting. open meeting, so yeah. everyone figured we'd have a, at least have be able to say something and right. not sit here with tape on them. That's why the citizen <laughs> comments at the beginning rang. I know, but and we don't know what the And if you look at the definition of open meeting, you can find that, right? I understand that. Thank I know you. I know that. But I can't make a comment on something I don't know anything about yet. You, you have to give us an opportunity to work I, through no, this no, on our own. I understand that. Thank you. I understand that. Shall we move on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Something angry. My goodness. John. All right. So are we? I actually don't have the agenda. Are we we're not. We're doing the. We are at the EDC okay. policies and projects. Got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I um, have been chosen to, or maybe I insisted on being the moderator. <laughs> I can't remember. You did. You okay. worked your way well, in. Well, regardless, it's yeah. either way, I think it's excellent. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to stand up up front. So, so this is the same. Oh, sorry. The same page that we showed at the EDC meeting on May second where we said this is what the proposed agenda for this meeting is and there was a little back and forth but no suggest you know no fundamental suggestion to change it so and what i'm going to and let me just remind you of what the agenda is and uh and then i'll take you through it the first uh section is to play back the highlights of that historical information that charlie uh, mentioned that um, is on the website um, and was distributed to EDC members so it's available to the public and to us but um, in case you didn't read every single thing I've picked out the highlights of basically where we started uh, this is before my time but where we started what metrics we said we have how we organized ourselves etc and then um, a, a section which I have arbitrarily judged just because there wasn't any other process for doing it i've basically gone through and said given what we said how are we doing against that um and this is not an official statement it's just my uh, just to start the discussion um what and what have we basically learned and then given that what i hope i hope this will be relatively short because it's factual and you could disagree with my conclusions you know uh, which is fine but we'll come to some conclusions about where we've been and then to basically try to use this meeting to for us to kind of come to a point of view, if we can, about four questions. One is, do our priorities need adjusting or do we maintain them as they were originally laid out? Second is, do we want to make bigger bets and pursue multi-year funding? I think these go hand in hand. Um, third is, are we organized to make progress against whatever priorities we describe or do we need to change, shift a little bit the way we organize? And fourth is, how do we engage, what is fourth? How do we build greater community support for the work? Um, 
And I think, and by the way, as I thought about this meeting and this presentation and this agenda, there are going to be a lot of issues. There are going to be a number of issues which are quite important, which don't quite fit into this, that are the next level and the next level. And that's why, Jeff, for one of the, or Joe, if you don't mind, I call you that. Um, the, the, um, I might. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, is um, uh, the, why I think there's going to be this is going to be. Hopefully, we can we can you know establish a clear strategic direction today. But there's going to be other ancillary questions that will over the next few months will continue to kind of resonate. So um, I think there'll be a fair bit of discussion. We don't have to solve everything <coughs> precisely tonight. It'd be nice if we did. So this is where we are. Every okay with this? Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to go through these first two things relatively quickly, so that we can spend most of the time on this discussion. So, oh yeah, so sure. Do you want me to? Uh, yeah, don't move the for it uh, Yeah, no, go. Okay, yeah, you can flip. Them. Okay. Oh, skip. Yeah, this I is. I think it's. Am I going sideways? No, no, no. You're not. No, no, no there we go. Okay, you keep going. Okay. So just to start at the very beginning, March third, two thousand fifteen. This is the second iteration of the EDC. Um, shall the voters approve a 1% local option tax, option tax, the revenue for which will be used for municipal economic development, to invest in future health and prosperity by promoting the town, residents and businesses, and by funding special projects. And this highlighting was in the PowerPoint presentation to the select board on December 15th. Um, you know, these are the economic development, promoting the town, funding special projects. That's why we're supposed to be here. That's where we started. Um, and we set two original objectives, uh, increase the number of visitors who are most likely to develop connections to the area, grow and diversify the resident population to enrich the community and the quality of life. You'll, by the way, the theme, sorry, go ahead, John. No, no. <laughs> the theme here, in my, just to give you my own perspective having been through this, is this is all still incredibly relevant. We don't have to recreate the wheel. There's actually very, very little that I can think of. I would describe it as tweaking given three years of experience, more about how we organize and process than, oh, no, visitors and residents, that's ridiculous. You know, we want, <coughs> uh, you know, I don't know, rivers and animals or whatever. This is, it all really made sense. And I think what we need to do personally is just to kind of get back to it. So, so those were our original objectives. This is December of 2015, <coughs> sort of chronological. And, and then at that meeting, this is really interesting, I think we established five sets of performance metrics. Um, which at the time, just judging from the PowerPoint, we were, you know, felt that it was really important. And there are actually a history coming up to December of 2015 of how we've been doing in the last five years prior to 2015. I don't think we've maintained that. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me personally something we should go back to. Uh, this, sorry, we have maintained this. We, we report monthly on this, which is great. Tax revenues from room wheels, basically the 1% tax which is growing at 6 to 8% per year in the last three years. Um, number of visitors to the Woodstock Welcome Center, uh, Woodstock Elementary School <coughs> enrollment, number of housing units occupied by full-time residents, and number of registered voters. And these are really simple, solid metrics. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we can. Well, just add to the first one, the, the, the two years that I looked, um, our Woodstock's revenue increases exceeded that of the state. Right. So it's. There's something significantly different here. And I, it's great that you, f I've been trying to find that number, that oh, comparison, so that's great that you up. found it, yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't surprise me. And this year, just so you remember from our two meetings ago, that our, our winter, you know, our, uh, the winter season, that's <coughs> still some debate as to what month that covers, was up 16% over, over the prior year. And I think the state had a pretty good winter season, too. I've heard, what did Killington, I heard, was up maybe even that order of magnitude. But we're keeping pace at a minimum. Yeah. So. so it's good, yeah, it's good news. But I think these other metrics are important too, and, and uh, it shouldn't be too hard to, I think it was a very clever initial proposal. I hope we can go back to it. Okay, I think we move on now. Next slide. Um, okay, <laughs> this is ha in a year later, and it apparently, again, I wasn't here, but apparently we took about 12 months to kind of then take <coughs> those basic principles and put them into practice, organize ourselves, et cetera, et cetera. Mr. Kimball stated that this is how we would like to spend what was then 220,000 a year. This year it should be about 280. 70,000 to promote Woodstock, so that's uh, about 30%. Uh, 46,000 to fund grant applications, 9,000 to cover administrative costs, 95,000 to fund big batch bets that have the greatest potential of achieving its goals. <coughs> 
Uh, and the few leave was from the minutes of the select board meeting, correct? Correct. Yes. In December 2016 select board meeting. And I'm going to come back a little bit and, 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 and evaluate <coughs> my own evaluation of where, how do we do on this. It's, it's pretty obvious. Okay. Also, December 2016, we said, well, what were those big bets? What might those big bets be? And we laid out five things. Partner with commercial property owners and tenants to maintain a thriving retail sector in Central District. Develop an entrepreneurial environment that provides support to, to new and growing businesses. Identify infrastructure facility improvements that would attract and retain new residents and businesses. Convert visitors to residents by actively engaging them when they consider locating here. And expand recreational offerings and access. I mean, this is, again, uh, all, it's right on target. <laughs> I think if you added, I think I read, I wasn't here, I read this point to include marketing to people to get visitors to come and then converting them. And if you include that, uh, you know, I think this is a, is a, still is robust, is my, in my opinion. Okay, and one more on terms of our priorities. Oh, no, no, this is it. Right, no, keep going. Keep so right then there was a meeting a year later I guess an off-site or a, a meeting like this. Mm -hmm. Right, the Woodstock History Center. Right, and it basically it said, keep doing, what should we keep doing, what should we start doing, and what should we stop doing? And so I'll just read it quickly and then I'll, so, so there were a whole series of things that we were supposed to, you know, so keep doing. Focus on the website, focus on redevelopment of the East End, provide economic resources to start new businesses, uh, communicate what we're doing, administer, m modify the grant proposal, the, I, I guess the feeling, th there's more text in here, we, and basically this point was not, a, not all of the grants that we're agreeing to are really economic development. That was the point there. Um, work to fill the vacant second floor spaces in the central district. Keep doing those things. Start focusing on outdoor recreation. Start promoting Woodstock as being business friendly. Start influencing town-wide policy. Um, offer incentives to public service employees, like teachers and fire people. Provide incentives to new families moving into town. Establish a beautification fund to pay for streetscape and things. And then stop doing, and Nick, this is interesting, <laughs> stop awarding multiple grants to the same organizations, which uh, stop funding tourist season events, so, you know, the things that are in the main season. Um, that, that it, it, the text of this was it takes away from existing events. Uh, and then stop funding a traditional PR effort and stop funding one-off advertising effort. So I'm not opining on your recent request, but it sounded like at that point there was some question about whether we should be doing that. So I guess we had done it. And, and maybe it, we weren't, I don't know how, we, we weren't satisfied. There was a couple of one-offs we didn't. Okay. So those are the three things. We set those budget priorities. Um, we had these five big ideas, and we basically had to start doing and stop doing. And so now, keep going, and we Just can... Before I do, oh, stop sorry. doing, um, for instance, we wanted to focus on shoulder season and slow season events to bring people during when you, we needed them here. Uh, oh. That was the focus on funding, funding okay. tourist season events. Well, well actually, the, words, the word was fund sh funding shoulder season events. Oh, we wanted so to do that more. Right, that's why I think, yeah. but it was under the stop doing. Yeah, no, we wanted to have shoulder season. Right. I think. So I think, anyway, I, I may have... Unless we said there was no way to fix April. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so now, oh, and then this is our financial history, and again, for those of you that, you know, roughly speaking, I think what's, this is just at a high level, there's Sally makes available more financial information than this, but just at a high level, our revenue, if you adjust it for, if you adjust it to make it comparable, <laughs> apples to apples, was 210, 250, 265, 290, this is the current year that ends in June. Um, we forecasting 290, um, we've, which is about a million dollars. We've basically given out, uh, we've made grants. We haven't necessarily written checks yet, but we have allocated 550,000, and we've got about, we should end the year with about $450,000 not yet spent. And you can see that, that in the first year, we, we didn't spend very much at all. The second year, we ramped up. The third year, we spent all of what we had. And then this year, we're on track if we don't do any more grants, which is <coughs> unlikely, I think, since we have some grants in front of us. But uh, if we do no more grants, we would be at 54%. If we do all the grants that are before us, we'd probably be at 70 or 75%, something like that. What's the uh, fiscal year? June ends June 30th. June 30th. Yeah. So we're coming, you know. I think we've got what we have on the table for the most part. But we st what that says is we've given out a lot of money, and we also have still a lot of money in the bank. And we, and we can look at if this trend, you know, 
at least stays stable, we can look at two hundred seventy-five to three hundred thousand dollars a year going forward. As which I think, if we're thinking about big bets, is uh, it, 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 let's put it this way: far and away, the most money we're going to get is in the future, right? So we shouldn't be thinking that we have four hundred fifty thousand, or six hundred, or two hundred eighty thousand, or one hundred and twenty thousand left. <coughs> we should be thinking about two hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars a year. <laughs> it, that pays for big things. If we want, if I think we should be doing big. Things. Okay, so I think that's the end of our history. And now, okay, so you, this is the 35 projects that we funded through December. There's a few more that we've added. I think we're sort of familiar with that. So let's just go on in the interest of time. Oh, and this is how we're organized. We have four committees. And uh, so, again, I think we all know that. Okay, so now what have we learned? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take those three things that we did. This is the funding allocation. These are the big bets. And these are the do's, don'ts, stops, and starts, and whatever. And I'll just say, what do I think we did, and what do I think we didn't? And the answer is we did a lot of it, but we didn't do all of it. We did some of it, but not all of it. So the first one is the budget. Um, on the next slide, sorry. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know exactly, but we're spending order of magnitude $70,000 a year, I mean, plus or minus 20%. We're, we're spending real money on the marketing uh, of, of uh, Woodstock, uh, um, 46,000 to fund grant applications. I mean, this goes way up and way down, but if you look over three or four years, it's, it's not that far off in terms of community, community grants. It's probably quite a bit more than that. Um, we are definitely spending 9,000 to cover administrative expenses. I think we probably are misclassifying some of those expenses, so it's pretty hard to draw any conclusions about it. But I think our original idea was to spend a very modest amount for administrative support. And where we haven't done is, is you know, remember this adds up to 220 if we're at 280. Um, you know, we're not spending $120,000 a year on the on those five big bet things. We have done some big, our biggest grant has been 50000 We had a $30,000 grant, I think. Um, and the PR firm was 70 grand. This is old. Yeah, yeah fine. Fine. Yeah, yeah, the big, I mean, the big, the, the bulk of the big expenses would be, yeah. you know, in the first. And the first website we work was. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but on the big bets, you know, well, sorry, the big bet, the one big bet we've made is marketing. Yep. And I think we all feel good about that bet, but, but the other big bets I think we haven't really. So we've done some of these things. We've stuck to some of them. We probably haven't stuck to at least one. Okay, on the next page, we've done, I, I think, you know, we have done something. It's a small, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a small, <laughs> small <laughs> check. <laughs> Took me a while to make it smaller. Um, you know, we have a storefront um, incentive program. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's exactly what this means, but to call that a big bet is, I think, overstating it. Um, we've identified infrastructure improvements, um, and I'm including an infrastructure and facility, childcare for sure, um, which, uh, you know, but there's other things as well. And expand recreational offerings. We haven't implemented it yet, but I think we are, we have done a lot of work and are fully expecting the River Trail Loop to come to fruition. I don't think we have done really I, I, anything recently, that is certainly not in the last six or eight months that I know of where we actually engage with residents uh, or prospective business people. Beth actually hosted, this is the first one I've been to a meeting. I'm sure you guys do this all the time, but um, we haven't maybe been as helpful as we could to, you know, there was a business person that came into town and Beth asked a few of us to join and, you know, we, we helped. Well, we tried to help. I hope we succeeded, but we tried. But I think as an EDC, we haven't really been doing that. And I also think we haven't really been involved in policy or business environment or trying to get, you know, think, well, what would help with the retailers and what would help the developers and what, you know. And that, not that those things should always win. Maybe historical preservation is more important than economic development, but there should be a voice. I think that's what, that's what you all wanted when you established this as a big and priority, and I don't think we've been doing that. So Do I will we say support that. support an entrepreneurial and, uh, facility? Yeah, but through the yeah, office office center. Center. Yeah. 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 So the office center. Yeah, would fit in that category. Yeah, sorry, okay, you can put a small mm -hmm. green check there if you want. And I would also say that, I mean, for a small check, I have, I, I do meet with people one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Yeah, nothing big has come from it, yeah. so it's it's sort of a very small check in the sense of yeah, it, and, it's and happening, the, but it's not. And the risk of yeah, the the risk of putting of yeah. there's only yeah. two. It's either right. a big red X or a big green check. <laughs> <laughs> <There's> a, <laughs> obviously, the reality on all these is this is subtle, yeah. But yeah. fundamentally, I think we've we've certainly done more things in those three areas than we've yes. done in these yes. two, mm -hmm. which sort of says okay, we've done some of the priorities, and but there's some gaps that we could fill as we think about what we want to focus on going forward. And then in the third area, again, it's sort of a, a mix. We've done oh, one more slide, sorry. Mm -hmm. So um, 
<laughs> so we well, were still talking about the last one. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so you know, I think we've definitely focused on the website. We've we've um, helped to start in terms of childcare. We've helped businesses to expand. We have put a lot of thought and process into the grant program and have changed that from when it began. We focus on the outdoor recreation center. We have we we haven't established a funds per se, but we have funded uh, beautification efforts. Um, I think we've stopped awarding multiple grants to the same organizations for the most part. I don't remember that happening recently. Um, I think we've stopped funding a traditional PR effort. Um, I'm not sure why. I don't. I, I, I would ignore this. I, I don't think that. Sh I think that should be black. I didn't know. I don't know that we're funding. I don't know. I, the, the black. I don't know the answer to. We haven't done. You know. We we haven't worked on second floor spaces. Um, we haven't focused on the east end much. Um, yeah, we, well. Well, okay, the, the river trail. So I think this, well, I think this, well, no, I guess so this is a little study. Yeah. 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 Perspective bias. Okay, sorry, that was before my time. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so we have done some things there. That's a fair point. Absolutely. I need to remember. Do you want me to change it to green here? Yeah, can you? Maybe. No, no, no. Maybe not right now. Here, just write it on the pad. I'll change it to green because this will get updated. Um, um, I, you know, I, I don't think, again, I think, you know, I'm sure Sally, you know, and, and, and when you're meeting with people, I remember the EDC, or Beth, obviously, you know, from the chamber, you're obviously doing this. But from an EDC point of view, I don't think we've had a big role in promoting what's like. We haven't talked about policy and, you know, haven't been a voice for that. Well, here, we influence townwide master plan and regulation. You know, we haven't yet done that as an EDC. We haven't offered incentives to uh, employees or to families moving to town. We've talked about <coughs> this. Um, personally, I think maybe w w this is a very much of a two-edged, of a tricky thing. So I'm, I'm not saying we have to check this box, but at least the only thing we've done is put the um, the state um, incentive up on the website. Yeah, that's it. But I, I would I would urge us to consider um, some of a lot of the marketing work that we have done, um, and a lot, a lot of, of it, it, yeah. it does. Um, I know that the website uh, has focused on people who have recently moved to town, young families who've relocated here. Right. Uh, there's a lot that is really impossible to measure right. as far as um, how that's influenced promoting right. Woodstock as being business friendly. Um, I know that especially among the younger entrepreneurs in town right. in the central business area, those efforts matter to them right. even if they don't often talk about it. Right, right, and they right. also, um, I've heard from people that knowing that the EDC is actively funding <laughs> things like the Optimist Center and that we are actively, that right. we exist as a resource. They may not be calling on our resources, right. but the fact that we exist right. is a reassuring thing. Uh, yeah, I think that, let, let me respond more generally to, because several of you have pointed out things where it's more positive than, than what I'm saying. Uh, there are, you know, anytime, so I was a management consultant for a long time, so I did a, a million of these charts, which basically, okay, how are we doing on whatever the business is? There's only three of these charts. The first version is, um, we, you, we're failing terribly. We're just really, we really have a, a, it's a burning platform. We absolutely have to change. That's not what this is. The second is, there's no need to do anything differently. We are near perfect. Congratulations. That's also not what this is. It, it, we're just we're neither of those two. Mm -hmm. We're doing. We, we've done a lot of things. It, it also is sort of helpful that as we think about really the priorities, the five big bets and the other things. What what should we now focus on? I, that's where I. That's why if there's a lot of green and a lot of red, that to me is it doesn't really matter. You know, if as long as we're not at the extremes. Um, if we all think that we're kind of in the middle, and that's fine. <laughs> and now we're, we're the next strategy planning meeting and the next year up for 18 months. And so let's just try to figure out what should go into that next year. That's sort of the spirit of, of this. Otherwise, I would have said, you know, then otherwise we would probably need to do like a real analysis and, and really go through each point. And so. so the purpose of this meeting, I would guess, is an attempt to how do we get to the exactly. extreme. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. How or even just how do, yeah, how do we make the next set of things green, even? Fantastic. Yeah. But yeah, I think Bruce, yes. The short answer to that is yes. <laughs> All right. So so here's, here's how I would sum up what we, where we've been. Our priorities haven't shifted significantly in three years. 
and I don't think they need to well, anyway, they, they haven't shifted. Shift, shift. We have some positive results that are in line with our original plans. And these successes, I think, and this is an important how question about how we, how we move forward. I think that successes often, not always, but often come when we organize ourselves directly around an area that we think is a priority, like marketing. And maybe, as I understand it, you know, the marketing committee went through ups and downs and it went through lots of work, but there's no doubt that we've accomplished a lot in the marketing area. Maybe partly because we went through those ups and downs and we figured things out, and presumably you guys stopped doing things and started doing things because you figured things out. Marketing is one area, recreation is one area, downtown revitalization is one area. Those are all areas where we established a core team. It was a clear priority. They went out and did things. In the case of revitalization, uh, well, in the case of recreation, it hasn't happened yet, but it's about to. In the case of revitalization, it hasn't happened yet, but it's about to. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's probably other examples as well. But I think it's important as we think about going forward, um, remembering that one of the things that that focusing a, a, a subcommittee or a group of people or something around an area that we had agreed was a priority is over a few years, and give it a few years, is it seems to be a pretty effective way to do it. We still have some important gaps to fill. Um, housing in East End, we've studied it, but we need, you know, we need to take action, uh, or some, you know, I think we need to consider taking action. Engaging with people more deeply who want to move here whether it's stay for stay or our own version of that or some, you know, something more than just Beth and Sally meeting with, you know, people who come, although we should keep doing that. Yeah. Um, establishing a voice on policy uh, in the business environment, perhaps a bigger involvement in downtown retail, meaning more incentives if we can figure them out or buying a building if a building needs to be bought um, or subsidizing, you know, or incenting the purchase of the building. And I would say a new challenge has emerged, which is we need to communicate more effectively. I think we've talked about that and so forth. So whatever we do, it should focus on these things, <coughs> but let's also figure out, make sure that we can get the word out, engage people more, more back and forth, not during this meeting, just immediately thereafter. So, okay, so given that. So that's sort of where we've been, and now the rest of the discussion is really to try to address the four questions. Maybe I, I should just pause and, and just ask any, before we go to these four questions, any observations that are important that are missing from what we might have learned or, you know, that, that, that might inform these next questions before, because I just picked out what I thought was, were highlights. What was your question? Are there any things about the last three years any important conclusions, either that you disagree with, I think some of you have you know, highlighted where you might not completely agree, or where you think I've just left something out that's important for us as we think about, as we now move to like debate, what should we do now? I, I would say there's two things. Okay. Uh, one is that we have also had a, a changing composition of the board, yeah. right? which is healthy. Um, which is good, but it hasn't always been at a regular pace. <coughs> and so there's uh, times when we have to actually kind of step back and then reset and then go forward again. Yeah. yeah. So that could affect how we, how we do it. So and the, the other point of that is we do have professional help. Yeah. Right. Uh, in terms of uh, we have an administrator who keeps us organized and on task, which we did not have at the beginning. Um, yeah. It's really more than a, than a content coordinator. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, that's part of that. I it's wasn't thinking that, but that is definitely true. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what Why don't we say have, have staff capacity? Mm -hmm. really yeah. yeah. Okay, Barry. So I think, I think another thing that we were successful at, although we're here because we recognize we need to make some changes, at least how, to how we do things, at least, is that uh, we, we have been pretty consistent. I think we've done a good job at, at identifying, fine-tuning the, the basic priorities yeah. and, and, and the, some of the tactics. And what I see is that um, maybe where we've kind of come up short is not by misidentifying tactics, but by not addressing the tactics. You know, I look back at that um, August 17 meeting, and um, um, just at a glance, it's all still good stuff. Yeah. And if we uh, maybe commit ourselves more actively to following through, 
um, on efforts like that, um, I think we'll I think we'd make some great strides. Yeah, stick to it or something. I think um, one thing that keeps coming up at almost every meeting is people in town are still wondering what does the EDC do or what have we done, uh, and I think looking at all the things that we've done in the past, there's not a whole lot of it that's real tangible for the average town's person. Especially for people who live here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's, I think that's, going forward, I think that's a huge focus. We need to kind of put something out there, whether it's a big bet, which I, you know, I'm more inclined to say yes, uh, where people can see, touch, feel, experience. Okay, other things about the past three years that will soon cause us to say, um, we want to go back we'll to the question, yeah. Um, you know, anything else? I think one fundamental tension has emerged, which is that, um, that yeah, that, that uh, the needs of visitors or what attracts visitors is not necessarily the same things that attract residents. And as we are trying to go after both, um, we just need to be aware of that fact. Um, I think that mm -hmm. I'm not sure that that's a that's not really a conclusion. <laughs> no, that's a learning from the past three years. Yeah. yeah. I thought you were also going to talk about attention, um, which I might add, which is I think um, maybe too recent. It isn't yet emerged, but uh, which is a tension between the, the the needs of the normal responsibilities of the town and the, and the yeah. priorities of the EDC. Yes. You know, like should we be fixing the sidewalks? There's an argument that says yes, there's an argument that says no. And I don't know that that's emerged yet, but I think the next year, the next 12 months, it's going to. So it doesn't belong. It's, it's something we need to anticipate. All right, other, other history? Because I, I want to turn this quickly again yeah, to. You want any history of what we haven't done? To what? Any history on what we haven't done? Sure, I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah. I just, you know, I just, I, I just thought the realization we haven't done. <coughs> A uh, human resource effort for filling jobs in Woodstock. That's it. I just I don't know. I just thought about it because mm -hmm. I don't remember us talking about that. But it doesn't matter. That's what I mean. Somebody who actually has to work and live in here, but just getting the help that's needed for all the businesses we do have. That's been on the and peripheral of you right. Know, it it just fits into a lot of things, yeah. but so that's I would right. that wasn't a priority. Yeah. So. Yeah. We were successful in not doing it. But, <laughs> but, as, but also, I think another way right. to, to add to what you're saying, that the environment for labor has changed from 2015. Yes, absolutely. And so as we go forward, the fact that we haven't done it in the past might, sure. you know, might we might think differently about it in the future. That might be an area where our priorities could be added to. Sure. Well, one of, one of the things that we did that was not very that visible was trying to help the job bank make some transitions. At one point, we got this, uh, I think the trustees, to allocate $2,500 to them to help build a database of different businesses and their job needs. Uh, and then there was actually a grant that we approved for the job bank. It was called. But they never. Was that for the bit time? Bit yeah, time, but they yeah. never did anything with it. And it didn't oh, go didn't. forward. So it, it, there was that partnership. Maybe that's not the right partnership, but they're, you know, they're a good player for us to work with. That would go back to what Barry said. If that's not working, if this is something that we need to be work doing, right. and the existing partnership that we thought might help us tackle it, yeah. is not panning out, what next? Yeah. yeah. There are no new issues, it seems like. There are just. There's just our ability to execute against them, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, to some extent. Yeah. It's only been a few years, so. But it's, it is kind of striking, right, that, that, that that's good, right? The mm -hmm. sands aren't shifting under our feet. We, we've been doing some things, and now we keep working. Okay. It, there's been a slight, I think, new issue, and I, and I will, um, I'll throw this out there. Maybe some people will disagree, and I probably can't go into We disagree before you say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I get this all the time. Uh, the revitalization project. Okay. I can't help but feel that initially it was more or less the bastard child of the EDC. It wasn't very really popular. Everybody didn't want to get into it at all. As a matter of fact, it wouldn't initiate it. It was called the beautification project and not revitalization. Uh, and that seems to have changed significantly you know, in the past few months. But um, it's 
is something that I don't think a lot of people felt was very important, but they do now, and I'm glad to see that change happen. Okay. <coughs> All right, good. Now you can disagree. <laughs> Through in <coughs> basically importance, so I can't write. Okay, all right. Let, let's talk about these the four questions. Can and I just make a really quick question? Yes. I think that, that that point ties into the tension between visitors and residents. In that, I think that revitalization yes. is a place that where those two goals align. Yes. In spe very specific, in certain certain aspects of that project. Mm -hmm. yeah. I also, I, 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 I've, already, I, I've often argued that those two lines are not necessarily mutually exclusive. Right. I mean, it, there's nothing wrong with the local residents having yeah. a town that they kind of like walking around in. Right. Okay. All right. So I think these questions, the four questions, are somewhat able to be dealt with sequentially. <coughs> The, the, the job of the mod scientists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Not gonna happen. Wait a minute. Wait, there's, there's some fluff time to fix this, right? Yeah, there's a few hands at one time. There, there you go. Um, yes. You guys. Yeah. Sorry, I'll be behind you. Um, So I think these are somewhat sequential. Um, so do our prior. So let's just start. Let's see if we can go through. And it's it's ten of seven, and we're going to try to finish by eight. Yeah. Okay. And we need fifteen minutes at the end for we, for the. That should do at least. Okay. So twenty minutes. So all right. So all right. I'm just trying to manage. Let me pay attention. And the case. Okay. Do our priorities need adjusting, or do we maintain them as originally laid out? Here's what I'm going to suggest right now, actually. I'm just going to go around the table and give a really brief I answer. You, you can have a sentence or two, but, but keep it relative. Don't try to convince everybody. Just tell us what your point of view is. Do we do our priorities need adjusting, or do we need to maintain them? Courtney? I just think we need to do some shifting. I, I think we're in the right, right direction on a lot of things, but there's definitely some... Um, what would be the most important shift? Most uh, the, and the me is uh, really because we've already identified some larger projects that we have really got to figure <laughs> out how we can match the funds to those projects that really make the most sense and have the biggest and, and showing it, somebody said to me the, the showing local uh, community that we've we've put in, right. made an impact on. For that so some tangible, here, tangible <coughs> projects. Okay, Joe, what, how would you? Do we need to shift our I, priority? I, I think uh, not so much shift. Uh, I, I have felt in the past that um, it seemed to become quite easy to lose focus on what we're supposed to be doing uh, in terms of what is the Economic Development Commission. Right. What is it? And it was easy to kind of shove things, stuff things under the umbrella. That uh, okay. probably really wasn't where it belonged. It belonged okay. probably a different venue. I think a classic example of that is what's coming up now. We're probably going to discuss at the next meeting is uh, whether we should fund enforcement of, you know, uh, short term. Short term. Yeah. 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 That's okay. that kind of thing. So say short term. Yeah. So I would describe that as, as the priorities yeah. are okay, focus, but, but the way we do it might been be. been a little bit of a problem in the past, I believe. All right, Michael. Uh, I think the ideas were great. I think, A, we need to execute better. But I think also, since I've been on the board, there, there just weren't any big bets to be had. That was a big issue. And I think finally we've got some coming up, and That's we true. have the opportunity to do something tangible and do something multi-year. Um, mm -hmm. So. You know, uh, and, uh, and kind of what it all boils down to is, you know, we get these grant proposals, and the trouble is, is this fit into our <coughs> our structure of what is economic development? Yes. And a lot of them do not, but they're great projects, but they just really don't fit. <coughs> okay, I'm going to say I'm going to focus on it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to say the same thing. We've actually laid the groundwork with a housing study, with uh, the economic revitalization study, 
uh, that we're right we're ripe to commit to large longer term projects uh, and I would say housing uh, uh, primary housing not second home housing is, is a big one yeah uh, but also in terms of the revitalization there's more of a partnership that can be struck between the, the owners of the buildings in our central business district and uh, the town I'm not sure what that looks like but it has to be more of a partnership mm -hmm. With building owners okay Uh, I think uh, I think fundamentally the our focus is is right. Um, I do think that we should do a better job leveraging ourselves, leveraging the work that we've done in the past to <coughs> kind of refine. Um, it's not just originally laid out; it's as we've refined it, you know, as we as we learn. And I and I think leveraging ourselves also means making a, a commitment to the big bets that we can find in the studies that we've done. Okay, so I'm going to uh, just check three of you have mentioned. Yep. Uh, and, then, and, and the other thing is I think when the, the grants, uh, the community grant program started, it was a way to engage community, uh, to get community input toward uh, kind of big town projects, and it's kind of evolved to something different than that. And it's evolved to something that I think um, occupies um, kind of an in in, is an in, imbalance of time and effort that we we spend in administrating that and I think that's one of the reasons that some of the other efforts um, you know we're, they're kind of um, uh, kind of tempered off to the side so I think I think kind of revisiting how we address the, the community grants mm -hmm. and the ERS is I mean, you know this but has struggled with yeah. balancing the time exactly right. as Barry said. And mm -hmm. I think we all agree that the community grants are, are an important, it's important to maintain a vein by which people in town can access our funds. Mm -hmm. right. I, mm -hmm. I think that's an incredibly important thing. Mm -hmm. right. Important, but, but we have process. to find a way mm -hmm. to make it a more agile process for us because right now it's eating up so much time that we can't spend looking at Big yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't have the history that you all have. Um, um, the the priorities that you outlined were, you know, basically it wouldn't take too much acrobatics to bring all these things into it in some way or other. Um, uh, so I, I I kind of agree, especially with what Charlie said. Um, the only other thing that strikes me as sort of new here is. Um, perhaps a better uh, job of getting the word out that we're looking for these things and say we you know in a reasonable fashion we've got some money do you have ideas and we're all we're eager to hear from you yeah I'm gonna call that proactive when the, the ERS when we proposed this meeting one of the three principles was being proactive and that's what we meant going out and asking people for ideas we have and, and, and not not saying we want ideas saying these are our priorities. We want ideas for those things. Yeah. We want an idea for the East End. Or we want an idea for the second floor, you know, empty space. space. Yeah. Or we want an idea mm -hmm. for events. For, 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 for events. Or, events. Or, or whatever whatever we decide, or, you know. <laughs> so, okay, Micah? Okay. Um, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, generally speaking, I think our priorities are on track. I do. Um, and I, I agree with what everybody else has said. I think maybe just a little bit of tweaking and adjusting here and there. I really, I feel very strongly about the big bets, the multi-year, what we've been doing. I feel really great about what Joe had said earlier about the revitalization project and how that's become a priority. And I think that that will help um, what Charlie was saying with the partnership with building owners. I, I hope that they those will sort of work together. Um, and housing, housing is massive and I think if we can solve for some of the empty spaces downtown and solve for some of the primary housing issues that we have and I think a lot of the other stuff will kind of come in with the you know the HR work employer uh, having more employees things like that will, will come from that okay so you would say that that help increase the HR supply is a second order that, that, that we don't have to add this as a sixth big area because if we do the five things this will happen. I think it will personally yeah I agree with that. Smart man. All right. you get the last word here me 
Yeah. Oh, I, I just agree with that. Okay. What she said. Okay. So I think I think getting getting if we if we want to get people to move here, we have to have housing mm -hmm. that is yeah. financially accessible for them. So to me, like these, a lot of these, if we want businesses to want to open here, we yeah. have to like. Yeah. <coughs> and there is it's work that. Sorry, I don't know if this is the time to say that, but there is work that's being done by other organizations yes. within the town actively right, right now on for instance housing mm -hmm. um and so partnering and making sure that people that do right. people are doing what they do best right exactly. so can you go back to great so thank you can you go back to the page which had the five big bets one yeah no no one that's it right yeah so what i what i would observe is that and and most of you half of you said this explicitly is that on the, on the areas of priority we're not really suggest most of these comments are about how we go after the priorities right? how big or small let's do big you know a, a, a focused or more accommodating well, let's be focused um, uh, doing it ourselves or doing it with in partnership let's do it with a partnership um, you know uh, being reactive or being proactive let's be proactive so I'm not hearing, so I think the general, the sh very, very short answer to, if you go back now to, to the questions, <coughs> the very, very short answer to this is uh, the priorities don't really, the priority areas, I should say that, the priority areas don't need too much adjusting. Maybe some group of us should go back after this meeting and for the next EDC meeting come back with a, a slight rewrite of those to reflect today's conversation, but it's not going to be much different. Really, I think most of these comments are now going to apply to the second and third questions, second, third, and fourth questions. Which is sort of Joe. The how do we do things? We kind of had to ask this first question. I, I wasn't not surprised at the answer, but we oh, had to ask the first yeah. question because otherwise, yeah. it, it, the how is, yeah, is irrelevant. Point, yeah. So let's. So I think do we need a lot of discussion about? Well, the multi-year we multi funding one was um, kind of what was what was presented earlier in this being from the comments that Nick was mentioned. was something that would became a annual budgeted item. Right. Um, so those are the things that um, I guess that's within the larger picture of some of this, though. <coughs> of um, you know, how do you address uh, a grant for a big product versus a uh, multi-year budgeted funding item? Well, I, I <coughs> multi-year could also be a grant for a big project. A grant for, for example, uh, a river, the river walk. Mm -hmm. Let's say I'm making this up. Let's say it's going to cost four hundred thousand dollars. We could basically borrow uh, three hundred thousand dollars. We could put in a hundred thousand, and we could borrow three hundred thousand for six years, and allocate, you know, seventy thousand a year. Or we could. That that's a different multi-year funding than what Nick was suggesting. Yeah, both of them. Right. Or as a, a thought that we had. Occurred, uh, thrown out before is if there was a piece of property that would support 40 housing units right. and it took a million dollars in order to get off the ground, could we commit a portion of our funds to pay a long-term bond from that yeah. and then actually deliver that to a housing group? Mm -hmm. yeah. So and that's a big yes. bet. It's not all the money, but it's a big chunk of the money. Right. Yep. I think that's, I personally, I didn't get a chance to, well, I mean, you, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I've been speaking a lot, but personally, I think this is a really important thing. I think it opens up, it doesn't require us to spend a lot of money. But it opens us up when we when we become proactive. And let's say, I mean, housing, I think, we all agree housing is a priority. John, if, if, if you remember this meeting we had this afternoon with the gentleman yep. who was looking for, uh, would start to possibly start a business, the one glitch that we had was housing. Yeah. yeah. If you get employees, where are you going to find? Right. So if we, if we, I'm sure, we, so we all agree that housing is a priority. The ability for us to go to the community and mm -hmm. seek ideas around a, 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 along with a statement that says, look, we are prepared, we understand that, e that housing development in Woodstock is largely uneconomic, that's why it's not happening. Mm -hmm. We're prepared to change that mm -hmm. if, you know, within, if, the, if the scale of the project is big enough and it's affordable for us. Mm -hmm. And so we, we're interested in ideas, you know, we're interested in ideas, sorry. <laughs> I think so. All right. So, uh, uh, is any other comments about this, or can we just? We, the answer to question one is generally yes, with some tweaking. Mm -hmm. um, the answer to question two, can we just say is yes, we're prepared. 
I don't know what three though. No, I, wait, 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 wait. I just want to get. Okay. If we get two, we've done two okay. things. <laughs> I, I would say the only other thing about number two is that um, we've had the discussion with the with the lights and the flower baskets, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and we had established that policy uh, that we wouldn't fund multi-year commitments, but we have the source of funding that's worthy to bring up to say we should be doing that. That is endemic to the beautiful, uh, I, I don't want to say beautification because you said Thank that wasn't you. the wrong I word. I did but Joseph. Sorry. Uh, the streetscape, uh, dy dynamicism of the streetscape. Is, is, that, is that better? Wow. <laughs> I'm just pulling it out of so, it. So what I would say is that one thing that I think is a real important discussion is understanding what some of these commitments might be. So that if you make a commitment right now to fund a multi-year project, and you know that's going to be for ten years or whatever life. You're so so. There really needs to be a better understanding of the budget process for the organization. For yeah. The, for the okay. I'm going to just flag that because that's going to be are we organized? That's oh, okay. for us to come back to that. But that's a really good point that we might have overlooked. All right. Any other things on big bets, or can we can we say that the gen short answer to that question is yes. Um, once? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. All right. Now, how do we how do we organize against our priorities? Um, so uh, I'm gonna take this is the one place where I'm gonna take advantage of being <coughs> the one who wrote the PowerPoint slides. So I'm gonna put <laughs> I'm gonna put in front of you an or a proposed organization. You can completely disagree with it. I have the thick skin, but I think I thought it was useful to frame something so that. It's easier then to disagree and we'll come to something. But before we do that, I just want to say, I, Sally's point, I think, is need budget process, need better bu budget process, because uh, the bigger the things get, the more important that is. If we're just doing $5,000 grants, it doesn't yeah, really matter. Yeah. All right, so let me just show you one, one, yeah. So this is, a, this is, remember, we have the other chart, which has four subcommittees. This is five, and I think it's, it captures within it, if we assign some of the specific priorities to them, it covers the waterfront in terms of those priorities that we said were important. The thing. So one is the marketing subcommittee, and th that we have that. It doesn't change. It's operating effectively the website or the editorial board. You know, there's no, not suggesting any change. <coughs> but also suggesting engagement with prospective residents and business owners, which is another form of marketing. It's different marketing than what we're doing now, but if you've got people with marketing savvy, hopefully they can do two, those two things. Mm -hmm. So that would be one subcommittee. How it, We need to, I think, need to have a housing subcommittee. It's a priority, and, and that will cause us to be proactive. That, if there's a housing, if I'm on it, and we're the first <laughs> meeting, I'm going to say, uh, what are we supposed to do? I mean, we'll all say that. Uh, we don't know. Well, let's start doing things. Mm -hmm. And that will cause us to be proactive, and we'll do what we can ourselves, and connect with this sort of thing. But we should have a study. Oh, we got one. No, but I don't mean that we haven't done this. No, I know, I know. But, we, but the study was something that we could do as a group. The follow-up, if we, that's yeah. why I go back to that success point. I think it was called implementation. Yeah, I mean, the, the yeah. revitalization, we funded the study as a group, mm -hmm. but the, the specific recommendations that we're about to implement came forward, not from the EDC, but from a subgroup that was focused on it because they did harder work. And I think the same thing is true about marketing and so, so. Okay, the third, uh, this is the question mark. This is, I'm not a namer. So this is not the name of it, but physical amenities. And it's combining, and again, we could keep the project separate. It, I know that there are sort of two teams that are working on the river trail and one in the revitalization and the other. We don't have to change things. We can, it's just conceptually, there's, there's physical, Assets. dynamic improvement, whatever you call it. And it's not just the, you know, it's not just the revitalization. Um, there's been a proposal not put forward to us, but a proposal that's been very well thought out by a couple of people who are in the room to redo the green. $750,000, it would be spectacular. Th this group ought to be thinking about that. Maybe that's too big. Maybe we can only do a piece of it. Maybe we shouldn't do it at all. But, you know, making the green really attractive, if you, if you think it can be approved, maybe some people don't, th that would at least be on the agenda of this group. And we would all look to that subcommittee to be proactive and to come up with whatever the big ideas are. We already have at least two. Um, the fourth is policy. And put, I put a few of us, I actually talked to a couple people about this page, 
a few of us put thought that we'd put the retailer relationship with the business community in this. So basically storefront incentives, business policies to encourage economic development, partnerships with the partnerships with building owners could could be in there, uh, partnerships with retailers and uh, businesses and so forth. But this is the voice of economic development, whether it's trying to influence the planning commission or trying to influence the town or trying to work more closely with the chamber or with the businesses and so forth. Oh, policy. Uh, yeah, policy. That's Looking what at policy yeah, that that's has been around for decades that probably aren't applicable right now. Mm -hmm. Could be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, like when we hear that business, uh, uh, we didn't hear it this morning, but when we hear that, you know, you know, Woodstock is a hard place to do business. It is, yeah. Right. Well, why is that? What yeah. what, what is What's the next level? Th that this committee would basically, one of the first things I think it would do if, if we were on that committee is, let's go out and talk to people who say that it's difficult, and let's figure out what's difficult, and then let's go to the people who might be able to change that and say, look, you know, maybe we can't change all of it, but, yeah. okay. And then the community grants. And, and I think if we organize ourselves this way, uh, by the way, I would ha if we organize ourselves this way, we have an, each of these is a priority. It, it, I mean, they tie almost one to one or two to one to some of those big priorities. And um, you know, and so 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 this is one possible way to think about organizing ourselves. And organization isn't just what are our subcommittees. It's also budgeting process. It's also how do we make the grant you know within this group? How do we make the grant process workable, agile? There's a few other things about how we organize. So, so uh, who should be on the board? Uh, you know, th th that point is an organizational point. But, but I think this level of organizational <coughs> concept, we should try to come to some agreement on this or something else. So, Joe. So, uh, if I'm hearing you right, John, so are you thinking, is it a possibility that a budgeting committee would be separate in and of itself from any of these committees in terms of you know, do we have the money? If, if for example, storefront initiative needed money for right. a specific project, uh, would they go to the budget committee and say, "Listen, uh, we need ten thousand dollars"? I think I, have it? I would argue the that the EDC committee. is the budgeting committee. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. But I, but but absolutely, being proactive starts to me at the subcommittee level. So yeah. I would have each of the committees come to the EDC as they're basically doing now. Yeah. Like we have an example tonight. Yeah. You know. The, but the, the only struggle I see is that we can't recreate the select board and the village trustees in this organization, and we're only nine members. Right. Yeah. So we have to be realistic about what we can accomplish right. within that structure. Mm -hmm. If we have full time people that are working full time, or right. Well, um, and in fact, I think I, I, I agree. I, one, one thing I would observe is that you know, if we look at um, well, the River Trail or revitalization, both of those have a mix of people who are on the committee and. You know, so yeah, and community members, and that is awesome. It's very powerful. Yeah, yeah I'm confused about community grants. Now, if all the other four, the other four are situations where we where they would be seeking grant applications to accomplish things. So, when does this group? Okay, in? right. So, anyway, so this is, I think, a point of contention. Oh, sorry, this is a, co a complexity that we should discuss for a minute. There, there, there are two, there are two ways to think about this organization structure. Both of them, I think, work. One is that these groups are doing big things, and they're doing proactive things. So if someone has a grant for the flower pots, the, the flower baskets, for one year, it's a community grant. We don't need this. I mean, I would have this group basically say, yes, we think this fits into our vision of physical amenities. We support it. But fundamentally, the process of approving it and so forth would be here. And all of the smaller things would be here, and these would be big bets. Another way to do it would be to say that, that these groups do small and big things, and that they're the ones that are protecting these four priorities. So like the housing group, if you came to me and said, uh, I was on the housing committee, and you said, we want the flower baskets. The flower baskets <laughs> makes it more pretty. Prettiness makes people have a better time. People have a better time makes them more interested in moving here. Having them moving here improves the housing market. Therefore, it's a housing committee grant. I would say, no, no, go to some <laughs> other committee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's like the so, bowl is connected to the hip bowl. Right. <laughs> so, so, one, so one approach, which would be more focused, would be to say that grants that go to this group are, are grants that don't relate to the other groups, that don't have a home. And it's OK. I think we have to remember that in the founding legislation, it said it was not OK. 
No. In, initially. Uh, for community projects. Well, yeah. it's sort of implied, and I don't know, I wasn't here, but I, it sort of implied that there was going to be an other category. And so I don't think no. we should try to say it's not one of these four, and, you know, we have to, that is probably, in my opinion, is too focused. But what we could do, if we really wanted to stay focused, is to say, look, if you want to make a community grant, if it's in any of these four areas, you go to that committee. And and if they want to, they'll support it and they'll come to the EDC. If not, then you have to go to the general committee and that's going to be limited in terms of its budget. It's not going to be zero. But maybe we allocate, I don't know, thirty or $40,000 a year to this. And then the rest of the money is either big or small bets and we encourage big bets by these committees. So those are the two ways of doing it, Larry. And so that we can't answer your question. We have to decide that. Uh, two thoughts. One, with the uh, community grants, I think part of the reason to, to do this is to keep, again, the, the kind of the community grant process uh, uh, isolated, if you will. Yeah. So, and, and what has happened in the past is we've been approached for a community grant, and as a board, as a committee, we've recognized that well, this is really kind of like a big bet. This is something that EDC should be. So maybe um, community grant committee is the funnel, um, and their recommendation may be to the EDC, may be this really seems like a bigger project that one of these committees should take on. That's a good way to do it. That's another way, the third way to do it, yeah. And then, um, second thought is, um, seems like under EDC, um, I'm not sure what they are, but there should be similar kind of responsibility list, right? So there are things, you know, when we meet as a committee, besides hearing from each of the marketing sub, you know, each of the subcommittees, um, as an EDC will be, presumably doing something. Um, you know, whether it's determining that um, we should be uh, revising priorities or whether we should be um, do, doing things differently, long-term. Uh, you mean, what's the, you know, what are the grants? two or three objectives of a subcommittee? Is that what you're saying? No, what are the two or three main objectives of the... Oh, of the committee of oh, the whole. Of the committee as a whole. Oh, yes. Sorry. I, I, yeah. yeah, I think it's, in effect, it's the answer. It's, in effect, the same question Joe asked in a different way. Mm -hmm. I would see that the committee of the whole is allocating resources across this, these groups. Mm -hmm. and, and technically, uh, um, agreeing to the proposal. I mean, you know, I, I would imagine that the EDC as a whole wouldn't reject outright a subcommittee's proposal that it had worked hard on. Mm -hmm. but, but providing that, you know, it, the recommendation to the select board has to be from the EDC. So it would be those two things. It would be, in effect, one thing. Approving the, the big ideas and so forth and, right. and, and, and allocating resources across well, maybe, maybe in a more strategic, strategic way, maybe, and we've had some discussions about, well, how, how much of the, the, you know, the 280 will yeah. go toward this or this or this. And right. it seems like we, yes. the, the commission needs to make those decisions first rather than um, the commission being in a, well, first come, first serve, you know, if housing subcommittee has a huge, um, you know, application um, or a huge, huge <coughs> amount, uh, you know, we do we end up running out of our funds? You know, we need, the EDC as a committee needs to determine what, how we want to allocate the annual funds. Right. And, 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 the, and, and the I think an important funds. process question is, do we do that first? Do we basically say, uh, uh, Physical amenities gets 100000 and housing gets 100000 or do we say, tell us what your projects are, and when they come and ask for 100000 we say, oh, boy, what if that means we can't give housing 200000 You know, I mean, do we do it before or after? But I would say, I would say, <laughs> I, I, my opinion is that we do the first, and they're kind of soft number, okay. because we need some, some target. So and we set, we set targets, right, set targets, and then we might change. Right, because the timing know, is different. Yeah. Probably change it halfway through the year. What have we spent so far? What are we mm -hmm. the projects that are Might going change. on? Right, based on yeah. what happens. Yeah. Okay. And if you if you have a lot of money, you don't have any projects that come up for it. Then you're just like, right. saving money when you could have allocated it to something that actually. Yeah. Will are you or can you funnel it into? Well, you see, if you if yeah. we have a multi-year concept, like if you were housing, yeah. and let if Wait. the proposal. I'm trying to listen to a call and. Um, so if you have if you have multi-year proposals and you, and so the housing group could basically say, listen, we need three or we need four hundred thousand. We understand we're not going to get that this year. So um, we're going to spend nothing this year because we want to spend four hundred thousand three years. Jill, you got to mute your phone. <laughs> um, it's a great question. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, let's see if we go. Let's see if we go. Jill! Jill! Hey, Jill. Hi, Jill. Can we mute her? Right here? No, we're going to have to turn her off. We could I just texted her. Line. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> Alright, so yeah, so the role of the EDC, and, and we have a proposal for, you know, that basically to, to do something up front, mm -hmm. but then to be flexible in the, in the face of you know, things that evolve. Um, Alright, uh, uh, other, other aspects of organization or other approaches, is there anything here that, that, you know, from a subcommittee point of view that doesn't feel right, or other things that are not about what subcommittees are that relate to? I, I, oh, should we? I would only add that I think you were right before, and we should maybe just state it again, that the subcommittees have been most effective when there's been a mix of yeah. very motivated volunteers or motivated yes. community members mm -hmm. with an EDC member or two on mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Those have been the most successful. Yeah. And I think that there's, it's an important thing to recognize that money plays into that, that, that while our targets are important, that um, such projects that have an excited and motivated person to spearhead <coughs> the allocation of those funds that should be taken advantage of. Okay. Which so is why the agility right. and why the flexibility is an important. Mm -hmm. It's important to both set targets, mm -hmm. but also right. um, capitalize um, right. on on right. Yeah. projects okay. that fit within. So a mix of EDC and community members and the importance of having champions, you know, whether on the subcommittee or at the head of a project that's part of the subcommittee. Okay. Should we talk for a minute? I, I don't know if it's our role to do we, do we to talk about the, the, the board and the board composition or do we is that is that an issue that we can deal with <coughs> later? We, board we board serve board. at the pleasure of the board. The select board. Right, right. You know, I did, uh, okay, fine. I meant uh, oh, you mentioned about you, the size. You mean of the, the EDC board? Yeah, the oh. commission. That's what he meant. Isn't that what you meant? That's what he meant. That's what he meant. Yeah. No, I, I meant you, you were saying that the change that the com I wrote board, but the commission has has changed its members. You didn't mean the select board. Right? When you said that over the years it's changed. Yes. I mean that's part of organizing is like how many of us are there. I, I think look one very practical operational question is if we have five subcommittees. Yeah. How many? And we have a mix. Each subcommittee is envisioned to be a mix of EDC plus community folks and they just. It, it, is that the right? I mean, can we do the work? Mm -hmm. And I, I'll because there have been some questions as to whether or not we should make the EDC smaller. Um, uh, and I happen to think that if we adopt this approach, because we have four or five priorities, that we need. I don't think we need a personally. I don't think we need a bigger EDC. But I leave aside who's on it. I, I think we need an EDC of this size so that there can be one or two or three per people on each of these plus community members, so that there's a group of four or five in each one that's doing the work. I, I don't think it's a question of quality, quantity as much as quality. Mm -hmm. I mean, I if you get the right people on the commission who are in themselves motivated and, and are willing to put in the work, that'll generate right into the subcommittee. You, you know what would be really interesting? Can we just go around the table, no discussion, just say what your first choice for committee would be. Okay, let's just see what the balance is. It doesn't mean anything. But this is not, I'm just interested to see what people are interested in. I'll, I'll say I, I would be interested, well, I'd say either or. I'd be interested in either policy or housing. Uh, I'd be marketing and physical amenities. Uh, revitalization and policy. Okay. Physical and marketing. Housing. Okay. Uh, policy and housing. Policy or housing. Okay. Housing. Housing. <coughs> Well, I feel like I have to say community grants and marketing. Okay. All right. So, so, th so I think we have. I didn't think of it now, but there's a pretty good balance. Some balance, are yeah. bigger, <laughs> with the exception of community grants, which is, um, you know, but you know, I think if there's one, <coughs> so, so I was going to say, I think the community grants that that could be a discussion of how it happens, and it may it may not be the same kind of committee as the rest of them, yeah. because no, it right. me, I, what's occurring to me about community grants is that the way it, it could work is. There's a deadline every six months, and if something, focus, if something can be it quickly and easily funneled into one of the other subcommittees, then the community grant subcommittee it, it operates exclusively to right. funnel that <laughs> right. proposal to the other subcommittee. Right. And then for things that aren't a part of anything else, they judge it every six months and move on. Like, it right. strikes me that that's infinitely more agile than what we have right now. And um, both on a community level, on a forward-facing level, if, if a community member comes with a proposal that does fit into one of those four, then they're moving right along quickly. 
And if they don't, right. they'll get an answer every six months. And there's not a timetable. It's not. It's not like every six months. If it's a exactly. if it's a physical amenity thing, and the physical amenity committee says this is fits with our strategy, then, then it can yeah. happen. You know, and we have quickly, easily. Okay. Mm -hmm. Physical amenity. That's a good. That's a really interesting. I think we started yes. monthly. Do you remember, Joe? Oh. Well, what, monthly? No. Didn't we look at grants on a monthly basis? Yeah, 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 we did. Yeah, yeah, quarterly, yeah. then once every three months or four yeah, we months. Did. Yeah. Oh, I think it was just every month. Somebody came in with something. Yeah. 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 Ye
Which includes not grads. Well, so so this, well, okay, you could, so oh, well, engagement yeah, with, there's some engagement going on here, and yeah. there's some engagement going on here. And but I feel like so those are two, sorry, right, it seems like those are two different kinds of engagement. Right, so and where would this fit to best? To divide those, that type of engagement, I think, would make them both more effective. So to have the marketing subcommittee engaged with, you know, website, businesses, a little bit, maybe larger picture, and community engagement, I think, could follow About what the EDC is doing yeah, and the I mean, grants. Personally, it okay. seems like that makes the most sense. All right. Any other any different suggestions than that? I don't understand. Where did she? Where would she was saying it belong that the, the task of, of of being doing better at at making sure the community understands what we're doing, getting their input, et cetera, the process of briefings and things like that belongs here. Is what Mika was saying. Yeah. Um, and I was I was I was kind of hoping that maybe that community grant subcommittee might go away, in the sense of if there is a process for, you know, just sort of getting them through. That I, that's why I would hesitate to put a whole outreach piece under that because I think that the community grants is just sort of boom 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 let's so get these through so is, your you hope to, is your hope to make a, a process that right. just funnels things so that clearly. makes it such more streamlined that there's that it's there that it's a lot easier but so then I, do we still not have an other category you know a, a category that maybe doesn't fall under those you know so for instance right now where would where would rainbow uh, Rainbow? Where would that fit? Yeah. Physical amenities? Or yeah. <coughs> well, may I ask a question? That's yeah. a good point. Um, it seems to me, and uh, please jump on it if you, if you feel you should. Is it community engagement a form of marketing in itself? It is, yes. but it's a different kind it's of different. marketing. Well, I here's, still, a, here's, still a, here's, a, here's a big part of that. It's like any organization, you have, you have to have PR. And the PR is, first of all, the 1% can go out the door any, any year. Mm -hmm. And so we have to have communication that's saying that the EDC and the select board together too are doing very effective things that are doing good things for the community. And so that communication has to constantly be out there to, to keep this engine running. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a marketing piece. That's yes, nice. however, yeah. I think that the, if you look at the goals of, so the, right now what the marketing subcommittee is focused on is um, marketing Woodstock to people who are not necessarily familiar with Woodstock or right. marketing. Does, does, that that to, does that have to be right. set in, in concrete? Can't that be expanded on somewhat? My only point is that the two streams operate very differently. They're, they're working in very different, on different yeah. scales. They're directing their messages to totally different groups of people. And they're using, that's why and they're larger, using different, different skill sets. That's why larger groups have exactly. PR exactly. here at marketing. Exactly. Here, okay. so. Julia, then I, then I would suggest thing. there are two words in what you just said that kind of strike me. One is, um, two different types of marketing and two different mm -hmm. strategies, right? But it's still marketing. I mean, those, those, those are types of marketing, in my view, and what I'm thinking, and that if a marketer is flexible enough, they should be able to adjust to one or the group. In a perfect world, yes. Let me, let me I don't think we have, I mean, I, I just, I, right, let me make a suggestion that, uh, does anyone think we don't need it? Don't need no, what? Don't need what? Uh, community PR. engagement? PR. The community, yeah. The communications to increase local community engagement. You we don't need it? You think we don't need it? Or you don't uh, think we don't need it as much as I am emphasizing? I think we need to do good projects like the housing study and mm -hmm. how we did that. And each one of them is going to engage the community. Okay. Yeah. And then not to that's say the EDC is thing. doing great things and running an article in the standard every two weeks. Which yeah. yeah. No, I, I agree don't think it that. just does that. With well. a nice photo, mm -hmm. even with a nice photo, <laughs> uh, but it's it's about the actual projects. Or if we focus on <coughs> the actual. Yeah, the good part is we're going to get their PR. I mean, we're going to get something written about well, if you build the river walk. Something it's going to get a big art. And okay. Katie, if, if our projects have more to do, our if we're accomplishing the goals of being focused on less tangible things right. and acknowledging the tension between visitors and residents and the goals, the way that the, our goals are. Right. We have been focused. We want to right. the good PR will come out of that. Mm -hmm. because right. Well, what we had build it and they will come. We yes. had we had community meeting, meetings with the community with the revitalization subcommittee. 
and it was well attended. So I would suggest that maybe so. So the place this fits is in each in each yes. of the big idea areas Probably. is what we're saying. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Okay. Anyone disagree with that? No, but I still have to ask: Do we not still need that bucket of other? All right. That's a different question. That, that's okay. a substantive question, which you did raise, and Sally sort of had an opposite view, which was. Um, just the phone. Get rid of that bucket. It, it, well, get rid of the, uh, which it's not just get rid of the committee, it, that means get rid of right. the other because right. no one's going to approve the, right. you know, the, the, the child care, let's say, it's not housing. I mean, you're going to have to find a committee that, that will agree to take it. I would um, say, I, I would actually say that I'm not disagreeing. Housing has a different word, has a different to, describe word to describe it. Yeah. To describe I housing. Okay. I, I would say that it should be like local livability. Living. Or like, yeah. like, I, I know you know. You know? Mm -hmm. so it's 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 making it's making sure that Woodstock has adequate housing and childcare and yeah. like anything that normal people here. Okay. But my concern is that if you if you don't have somebody that's really sort of being careful about the outreach and the marketing, if you say okay, each committee's going to take care of it, then it it then doesn't no, happen. No committee yeah. does it. Well, one thing, it just yeah. needs to, somebody to be responsible. One thing we could do is we could evaluate it quarterly. Yeah. We could basically, yeah. as, a, as a full committee, we could say, okay, let's just that's spend five minutes on each one. How have you been engaging with the public? Yeah. That, should be part of our, that should be part of our... And because we could have a great project and just not tell anybody about it, and then that... Right. Let's do that. It's not so great. That's <laughs> <laughs> not so great. Wait. You already did. It. Which we've done. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm, yeah. I'm going to arbitrarily... Um, uh, say that we're we've made progress and that we need now we need to go to the next agenda item because mm -hmm. to make sure that we finish today can you just flip to confirm that I just want to just sort of summarize um. <laughs> oh good now the, the majority <laughs> all comes up I've been wanting to do that all day <laughs> <laughs> so John for a next step are you thinking yeah. that we should be organizing by committee by a date certain say July 1 yeah, I, yes, I would say that's perfect timing. I would say that that what we that we have general answers for these four questions, and that um, and that a couple of us, uh, rather than again, I kind of put this PowerPoint together, but I did run it by Charlie and Julia. I would suggest that a couple of us just articulate, rearticulate again, just this last part. We don't have to go back here now. Just the last part, codify what we've heard, and have the remaining decisions get made at the next EDC meeting, maybe, or two, and one, let's say one, hopefully. So that, and that doesn't have to be like a, you know, that can be a regular meeting, but we might take half an hour to talk about the, the pieces of this that are still a little bit unclear. Um, so that starting July 1, we could form up this approach, and not just the structure, but also the organizational approaches. and. Um, yeah, and I, I th there'll be a few, you know, there's still some, as we try to write it down, it will become clear that we're not quite clear. Like, for example, one thing we're not clear on is do we have another category or not for community And plans? do we need one? I don't know right, if we need correct. one, but I, I'd like to just dig into that. Exactly, again. right. So there's an, that's one question where we're a little bit unclear. I, that's probably the biggest question where we're unclear, but as we go through the notes, there'll probably be a few more. I'm happy to be part of that, but I don't want to okay. do it alone. Because, yeah. so if, if over the next few days, maybe you can propose to Charlie who would like to be part of that. And then our next meeting is, she must be June 3rd or 4th. June 6th. 6th, okay. When's high school graduation the 8th? No, the next week. The following week? Does that make sense as an next step? But I think we've really, I mean, uh, basically, I think we've reached what I'd call an 80 or 90% consensus of, of what we think. Sorry, I, I did say this is something that's in contradiction. I did say that there'd be other opportunities for the public to kind of input and so forth. So I think we ought to think about a process of yep. uh, either announcing the June 6th meeting as a time when there can be lots of citizen back that's and forth. That's a good idea. Or, yep. or some other time. Maybe that's just the most efficient yep. time. That'd be good. So maybe what we would do then is we'd sort of present what we've concluded here for feedback from the community and allow a lot of back and forth, other suggestions and ideas. And we also need to make sure the select board knows about that meeting. Right, exactly. That here's where we're thinking. Here's right. We report to you, so here we go. Right. But that we would publicize and serve pizza at that, I would argue. Oh, nice. nice. I like pizza. that. And we have like that. June 6th is a community grant presentation meeting. Beer. 
just there. letting you know we already have two there. community okay. grants that are in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. So we might need, that might be a longer meeting, or maybe we wouldn't have subcommittee have reports at that meeting in order <laughs> to, anyway. Yeah, we'd have to probably work that timing out. We'd have to change the agenda, perhaps, to allow for that and yep. this. Move it up first, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think okay. you made the progress we did because of all the hard, great yeah. work you Thank did. You. To yeah. Oh, no, yeah. thanks. No, no, I, okay. Actually, it, it's really interesting. Good, uh, uh, no, no, uh, it's really interesting. <laughs> There's, n there's almost nothing that I, yeah. other than the organization chart, which is just a slight variant of the current organization chart, uh, I created none of this. I wrote it down. <laughs> but I it's went to the website and I went to the documents that Charlie and Sally had done. You guys, have, whoever was from March of 2015 was involved in this, did this. I think we just lost sight of it a little bit, or it wasn't at least in the, so now we just get back to it. Okay. Great. So. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You're too and you're right on time. Yeah, you're too modest. 7.40. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, Commission, we do have another agenda item, which is the funding requests, uh, and we have three funding requests, or a request for three parts, um, for the, from the Revitalization Committee. three parts. So, right, so there's a $7,000 request, a $16,000 request, and a $5,000 request. So, Joe, do you want to, um, I think everybody has received this by email as well, and so um, we could take them one at a time. Uh, is that the pleasure of the group, to take them one at a time? Yes, I'm yes. seeing a lot of heads nod, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, Joe, in just email conversation back and forth, one of the things that I know you guys did in your subcommittee was just pr uh, research stuff. So I know just for like for the benches, you actually went out and looked at different benches and got cost estimates. Yeah, all we those. we uh, actually we did look at them and we um, uh, presented to the community options and uh, asked them to vote on what they preferred, and that uh, that included the benches, uh, pick the tables we're not going to do because we have enough and uh, pots. And um, trash, trash cans. Sorry, what was? Did you say pots? Pots. Yeah, like pots for the pump outs. Bowl of pot. Yeah, yeah. It's planters. Huh? Planters. <coughs> planters. So, so did you say pump outs? Pump outs. Yeah, I yeah. think it's pump outs. Pump outs. Well, with an O. <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. so the reason it's in the proposal. <laughs> Why don't we start with the, the smallest one first? That's the five thousand dollars. But before you go into it, I just w what I was just going to ask is that typically with a request that we get from a community member, that's a detailed spreadsheet and all the costs. Mm -hmm. um, and even though we don't have that detailed spreadsheet with all the costs, it would make sense that anything that are these costs already identified in these grant proposals? I didn't see a detail. How detailed do you want? Charles? So the individual item. Yeah, the itemized, uh, here's the cost of each bench, here's, uh, <coughs> uh, here's the couple different variances, all that kind of stuff, which I know you have. We have. As a committee. Right? Yes. Um, and it may be, it's not something we have tonight, but we've put some of our applicants through the ringer in terms of the details that we've asked for. In some community. of them I wouldn't call the ringer, shall we? Uh, Go ahead. The, the green bags is a good one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if, if we can... Go ahead. We can look at what, uh, consider the grant request, I would suggest, pending receipt of detailed invoices for the select board to reimburse. Something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, as long as it, it doesn't require another vote. No. To approve or not to approve. Okay, fine. We can do that. But we, we can, tonight, give you prices of the stuff that we have researched and what the uh, uh, the community approved at the uh, 21st meeting. Okay? So, you want to start with that or you want to start with the $5,000? Start with five. That sounds good. Five $5,000 is a matching grant that um, would match $5,000 that the trustees have set aside for beautification, specifically for Teagle's Landing. <coughs> Um, I can't give you prices of plants that we're going to put in, or we would like to put in, but the majority of that money is going to be spent on stairs. Um, the stairs going down there, down to the landing right now, pretty, they're not serviceable. 
um, and they need to be replaced. And we like to do it with um, a long-term replacement rather than doing more railroad ties and having them deteriorate over time and going through the replacement process again. Um, we like to do it with grand steps. Um, Jack Rossi, who is the landscape architect in town and who's on our committee, uh, has uh, <coughs> volunteered to take that portion of the project under his domain. He's going to uh, line up whoever might do the work best. He has a lot of experience in that. He's done a lot of that work with, within his own business. He knows who to talk to, uh, who does the best work, and the, the best type of stone to put there for that purpose. So, uh, but his guess is the majority of the ten thousand dollars, the five were less than five from the from the uh, from the trustees, will be eaten up by those steps. Then the remainder will be plants, guard, uh, railings going down. Uh, uh, another table, picnic table down there, probably a couple of benches. And just things just to kind of really spruce it up very nicely. We're gonna, what we'd like to do, and Jeff and I talked about it, was have a subcommittee to the subcommittee that would consist of um, Jeff, Jeff Kahn, um, Jack Rossi, one of us, us three on the subcommittee, and Mary, uh, with Mrs. Camp's first Mary Lee Camp. Mary Lee Camp. And together, and coordination part because of uh, Mrs. Camp's association with the Garden Club, um, we've been coordinating an effort to do what's needed down there to make it look nice, a lot nicer than it is right now. That's what the $5,000 is going to be for. It's a matching grant with trustees. So, is that, so the 10000 is the amount of money that's available. It's not the not the estimated cost of doing all the work is that right right and do we know what the cost uh, anticipated cost of the total project is <coughs> no not exactly do we know if the ten thousand will pay for the stairs we don't yes we do jack feel very very confident that you know ten thousand would be more than enough to pay for the stairs but we're also going to need railings and plants and like i said a bench well yeah, so the railing, so you can't have stairs without railings, right? So, I said right, yeah, but I mean, railings <coughs> is going to be. So, what happens if, um, so <coughs> if the stairs and railings are ten thousand, well, how does the rest get funded? Well, we won't have any funding, will we? So it just won't, so the project won't be finished. Why not just have a larger grant request to incorporate all that to finish it? Well. Um, Actually, we thought it, it probably could get by the commission easier for just a simple matching grant. And given the fact that, uh, based on Jack's estimates, that uh, $10,000 was more than enough to cover the steps <coughs> and the railings, that there would be, the, the rest of the stuff isn't going to cost a lot of money. Uh, like, you know, different uh, plants that don't need a lot of sunlight or uh, maybe some other little bench or something like that down there. So I, we feel confident ten thousand dollars would be more than enough. Can the plants be donated? Can it be a garden club yeah. thing? Would they get yeah. into that? The height, yeah. yeah, well that's why we want to kind of Greenhouse. bring them into this. And the other question replacing the stairs from the street that doesn't replace the back stairs. Where's the back stairs? Where the back stairs? The back stairs. Oh. Those back stairs that goes yeah. up to the back lot. Is that oh. private property? That's private property, right? Yes, the back stairs. It kind of seems like all three of these should be under one as a part of a smaller part of a big bet to me. Do you mean the back stairs? Is that what you're all talking about? All three of these grant requests oh, 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 sorry. Yeah. should all be part of a village region. Right so a big bet and this is a the small dollars. portion of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we're rather than taking as three individual grants, I mean, I don't well, know, but we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're rating the matching grant to match the right. other right. dollars. Right. So we're just right. taking a right. one and not with the other ones. Yeah, yeah, we work, yeah we, okay. there's five grant out there that we'd like to get hands on to incorporate with this. Yeah. Well, does yeah. the village have any, like, if we wanted to put in more money, does the village have more money? No. No. This is okay. Can they still do that? Maybe next year. 
Like so the flow chart. Because are you thinking, what's the vision for Tigo Land? Yeah, yeah, I'm just thinking that down if, the road. You know, it's, it's or even not so far down the road. I mean, this isn't huge dollars, yeah. and yeah. it's very visible. It's very tangible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it would be really nice to have it look really nice. And, it, and would it would be a bummer if all we got were the stairs, stairs. which is right. very important, though. Right. I mean, they're like a liability. But listen, I'm going to make a little confession. I, I, I want to address <coughs> where you're going with this. You know, as I stated earlier. This revitalization subcommittee has been the bastard child of this commission for a long time. We've been working a year and a half on this. And so we've been working, approaching this very tentatively. Right, right, right. You know, with, uh, you know what, let's go softly, you know, take it easy right, because right, right. we've been uh, asked to do so many things right. so many times to get to this point, right? That we shot. don't want to rock the boat too much, and that's right. just the, the, what the feeling was. But opportunity is working right now. So, so <laughs> shoot, shoot for it. Why don't you just know. give us hundred thousand dollars, and we'll just. <laughs> 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 but also, though, the the there's been a real change in <laughs> the change yeah. of the position <laughs> of this table since the beginning of that conversation started, yes. right? Yes, so yeah, that's that's so right. So it has been, but we yeah. still didn't know what you know, to I mean, yeah. you know right now, Michael and I are going to vote for whatever you're saying, right? That's a that's a for sure. We've been talking yeah. about revitalization for years. I just don't want to shortchange this project. So yeah. That's the thing. I feel like if I you're going to get agree. 10 I grand agree. a few steps to 15 or 20 grand and get it done. You could I probably agree, do a whole thing for both. Thirty-five, forty thousand dollars and do it right. I, I know, but I, I totally agree, and I want to see this get done. I just wish that there was more detail about the like. Here's where this is how much this is actually how much the it's stairs are going to cost. This is how much the railings are going to cost. This is how much a bench is going to cost. This is how much all of this, and and I would be happy to approve far more than five thousand dollars. And I would, be, I would have been that. happy to do that, Julia, if we had the time. But we didn't have the time. I mean, with the the uh, uh, B and J um, report got pushed back until February. It was supposed to be done in December. It got pushed back until until February because of <laughs> stipulations that were made. And then we were required to have a community meeting. Two of them, as a matter of fact, one on the 21st of April, and then another one after that, which we had. And that was bumping you right into the summer. Now, you know, would have been great to be able to get all those specific what each screw, nut, and bolt would cost, but we just didn't have time. And, and if well, we want to get it this summer. I'm sorry, well, who's BMJ? Oh, DNK. Sorry. Sandwich. While I hear that point, I also am hesitant to do something quick and dirty when it could it's be It's accountability. Awesome. I mean, that's and and when when. I am complete. Like I, I very much. So want what this would you? S what are you suggesting that we get back to the drawing board, come back with the numbers, and then come to the next I'm meeting? Just, I'm as 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 much as I really, really do want to vote in favor of this because I think it really needs to be done, and I think it's a fantastic idea. Yeah, but I am very hesitant to vote with no budget. No drawing. There's a budget. And There's a ten thousand dollar budget right here. Well, I mean, we could look at it in two parts. We could look at it as a, a very physical thing has to happen. The stairs have to be built, and yes. then the other parts of beautification around that, the yep. stairs. So you can yep. come back with that, and we can do two. Can I? Can, uh, this yep. can I comment on this part of the meeting? Mm -hmm. I just have a suggestion. It's already the middle of May. Um, if if. You approved five thousand dollars, and if and this and if the trustees, if the trustees approved the five thousand dollars tomorrow night, I think that we will. Mm -hmm. um, we could actually, we know that we need the stairs, we need railings. If it's if the project requires more money, we could come back for that, yeah. but approve this so we can move on that's and what actually I'm create that's yeah. something. Yeah. Happens. That's exactly, that's what, exactly what we're saying. Okay. That's yeah. what I'm presenting. So I, I'd say because the. Meaning tomorrow, I'm really uncomfortable that there isn't a budget. I'm really uncomfortable that it's not a, a fully, um, you know, fully scoped project. And in the context of if we, if a community grant applicant came and said, you know, we we have about ten thousand dollars and we think we can do it for this much. Um, we, 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 would say we no. could we've had that before. And we've we had that before. Said no. right. Right. Because it's just or we haven't said no, we've said come back. We're, Right, we, we said do come it. back. Give us a number. Um, mm -hmm. I think this is different because it's uh, because the trustees. It is a matching grant, 
Um, and we've done up to before. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we can do 15 and say, let's try to keep it within the 10. Mm -hmm. And then we'll write the check for whatever and to make sure you know, that we can do that. Are the trust will, will the trustees be comfortable yeah, tomorrow with this level of proposal, do you think? Yes. If uh, the trustees definitely want to see it happen as soon as it can. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I'm, I'm saying if it doesn't complete Teagle's Landing the way we would all like to see it, mm -hmm. we know that the, there are some need. essential needs. Mm -hmm. Stairs Which and will be railing. regardless of what the vision is further down the line. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And, in the, interest, and in the interest of getting that done before the season really hits and getting the stairs. Yeah, in let me add to that. I'm starting to that. Let me add to that a little bit. Yeah, you got a motion. Oh. Yeah, yeah, a motion. Yeah, if you want my motion, let's get the motion on the floor. Go ahead. So uh, I, I make a motion that um, with, with some reservations that we approve a $5,000 matching grant um, for the stairs at Teagle, or up, up to $5,000 for improvements at Teagle Landing um, with the stairs and railings as first priority. You've had heard the motion. Is there a second? I'd like to amend I second that. that. Oh, sorry. There's a second. I think it should be 15 and just cover ourselves. This is in the discussion period. So Courtney yeah, is talking about 15. Yeah, I'd I say mean, we don't have to. Well, they still have to be accountable. Th they do, but I I would say that you know this is the application, <coughs> and we have reservations because it's an incomplete application. Yeah. But this is the application. Five thousand. I'm comfortable Good making a motion for that. We definitely need some itemized costs for this, okay. for the stairs we'll and for the next application. I mean, that's, that's no. Now, I'll, I'll, get yeah. to, I'll get to the point I was going to make before the, you know, the vote came about. The part of Teagle's Landing came upon the Revitalization Subcommittee as an add-on with it I, almost the last minute. Oh, by the way, you know, while you guys are doing that, why don't you take in the Teagle's Landing? We've got $5,000. If you can match it, then we can do something with the steps. I mean, it wasn't like there was a real long process involved where we had, a, we had time to think about everything and get, I said, okay, well, we'll give it a shot and see what happens. Nice. I think see what that's happens. exactly what makes me, for one, a little bit only a little bit uncomfortable okay. because to me, I would like to see it, I absolutely want to see it done. I absolutely mm -hmm. think it's a really important part of our streetscape that needs to be addressed and that deserves it deserves being thought about. Mm -hmm. It deserves that Well, we want to do more than think about it. Just, well, we, we haven't got time to think about it. I agree, time. but I'm saying it deserves a plan that is well thought out and considered yep. and... But what would what would be this, just on that point then, what could, when, if we approve tonight and tomorrow, uh, the village approves the $10,000 with stairs and railing as a priority. Let's assume that that gets the granite steps built. Right. And we're kind of going on faith, but I mean, we've got people who know what they're doing, so, you know, but we, we, it'll get built. Kind of when process. when would we when could we hope to have uh, the full a full plan? And so I'm just going to ask you, John. I'm, I'm going to say, what about the, sure. the suggestion of okay, we'll give you the the, the five thousand dollars now. Get the stairs in, get the building, and then get that done, and then come back with us with a full plan about what you want to do with that whole area. Yeah. I can, we can do that. Yeah. But then, then we'll have time to do it. Yeah. In the meantime, somebody's not going to break their neck walking down the stairs. Yeah. Can I make a comment? <clears throat> no. Um, as, a, as a member of the public, I think as much as possible, this committee should, this commission should be operating on the principle that things are done with a strategic plan in place. If, if you're seeing these steps as an emergency fix, then there are always contingencies that can be dealt with. But I personally would suggest that if you're going to fix the stairs because it's necessary to fix the stairs for to make it a usable space, then make that the project, make that the what you're voting on, and then come up with a strategic plan for everything that should be done in that space. And that should be based on people thinking about it as opposed to reacting to the fact that the stairs are falling down. I think that's a great suggestion. Charlie Beth is yeah. um, I just wanted to say that Mary Lee Camp came to our one of our meetings that we've had with a plan that included some benches, the steps being done. So there has been a thought out plan. Um, Mary Lee Camp, um, Brenda Blakeman, 
um, Jeff, Jack Rossi, Joe are looking at that in total. And so we'll come back yeah. with a yeah. complete plan. Great. Now, wait, so that, these are elements we know. There's a motion on the table. table. There's a motion on the table. So but wait a minute. That, but that may be second. quiet, probably hiring Jack instead of just asking for input. How do you feel about that? So ha has there been or will there be any outreach to community members that may want to participate in sponsoring a project like this? I don't understand the question. Let's say that again. You're going to ask anybody else for money? <laughs> oh, we have not. No. Donations. Oh, a guard Donations. Trustees. So then th I guess the other question is not only just what the plan is for the space physically afterwards, but what the potential use is. I mean, how you see it. Is it a place where you think buskers are going to be performing and that kind of stuff down by the river? What are going to be oh, performing? Uh, buskers. <laughs> so people <laughs> playing guitar <laughs> and uh, oh, I you know, that kind of stuff. So I, I don't know so just that. I threw that out there as just a thought for if you see the use of that space being different than it is now. No. And if the physical improvements to it require that. So that's in all these things. I, I really don't think that's anything going to change. I would love for that. that. I know. I mean, yeah. really, that's how I agree. Let's make that happen. Yeah, we can yeah. build a bandstand down there. Yeah, just uh, uh, hard school. Now the idea before now about buskers. Now we're talking. Half built into the wall. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we do have a motion on the floor, and has been second. Uh, we did have a second on the floor. I think Mika. I made a second. Mika seconded the motion. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Sally, could you read back to us what the motion is? The motion is to approve $5,000 for improvement at Teagle's Landing with stairs and railings as priority. A uh, $5,000 matching grant to the trustees, village yeah. trustees. Matching grant. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Does, does uh, we need the select board to approve it? Does design review or anybody else need to approve it? Last bit of discussion. Just want to say something. This is all possible in terms of the matching grant being approved tomorrow night because of the, the fact that you folks did approve um, the, the, the flower, flower pots. Oh, the flower pots. And we did not have to spend right. that money on that. So right. it was a great decision on your part. High <laughs> five. <laughs> so does uh, design review or anybody else need to review that? No, do you know? The stairs. They don't need to review the grant. I mean, obviously no, 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 no. I just mean that. But, but yeah, techni technically, no. technically, yeah. Okay. technically, they do. Jack is on to design review, so. You'll have to okay. go through the design review material. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once, yeah. 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 We'll have a drawing. But so yeah. that could be a decision. <coughs> right. And uh, the last question is, if if the money all gets approved, mm -hmm. does Jack have somebody actually lined up to do this? He he. Actual one person says, "I know the guy that will do it and do the right job," so he didn't share that with us. But I, I, you know, I trust his judgment. I'm just saying in timing. Oh, yeah. Not I mean, we, it, we, we, we talked about that, and I, he feels very confident that he can get that done. Okay. Quickly. So, again, the design re re review board okay. and things like that, that'll all be worked out. It'll have to be. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, so the motion's on the floor. It's been seconded. We've had discussion. All those uh, in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Motion carries. We have two more. Wasn't it? That's fine. <laughs> and that was the small one. That was the yeah, small that one. was the easy one. Uh, the next one is bump outs. Um, in case you're not familiar, with it, is everybody familiar with bump outs? Yeah, okay. Explain to me last time. Yeah. No. Uh huh? <laughs> no, I don't. Is that is anybody unclear about what a bump out is? Okay. Okay. So I walked with the. Um, Robbie Blish and we identified the places that he would like to see him and a couple of places where he would not like to see him. Uh, so there are 60 pots that are going to be required to make these bump outs. Um, Ray can tell you more about them because he researched them and got the cost on, on, uh, on the pots and, and uh, what, where we're going to get them. Can you uh, elaborate on that, Ray? Yeah, there are. Um when we had the public meeting, there was a split, an even split between uh, a modern-looking pot and a planter and a double roll rim, traditional. A terracotta. Yeah. It's on the terracotta. back of your right. application. Um, <laughs> given, and with here. Jack Rossi uh, yeah. being part of the commission he's on, um, he suggested that we go with the traditional planter. Terracotta, these are, these are uh, resin planters. Uh, I believe they're 30 inches tall, 24 inches round at the top. Um, and 
they would be planted and we didn't have to maintain the flowers. They, they have to be planted and, and Joe's going to work with uh, Phil about getting them removed in the winter. So they'd be planted with annuals, they wouldn't be planted with anything else. So it'd just be seasonal color. <laughs> yeah. Now Beth has worked with um, uh, the people who water the plants to maintain them over the summertime. Uh, I thought the cost was a little bit high, so um, may not be an option. May not, but it may not. We're going to look at that options in terms of um, getting them maintained over the summertime. Um, the spots I can I can tell you what the spots are going to be. Um, they're the crosswalk between the covered bridge and the green. The crosswalk between the inn and the green. The crosswalk between Gillingham and uh, Vermont Flannel. The crosswalk between uh, Bentley's and the pharmacy. The crosswalk between Montverde and High Street. That's four. Those are specific places. Five. Five? Oh, I missed one? You said six, nine, five? Two, two on the green. Six, five. Oh, two. Because it's one from the end to the green and one from the covered edge to the green. Oh, okay. Two to three on oh. each side. They sit on the actual road or on the... Yeah, well, the side. <coughs> they, what, what Robbie wants is that to go out no further than the parking area. Yeah, the striped right? area. Okay. And in a situation, no way, he, he's going to go around with me when we finally get the pots in and really show where to put them. No parking spaces will be eaten up. Um, will anything there. be painted on the road? No. Because uh, it's kind of a, a, a trial thing. But in the future it would be. It could be in the future. We, we really want to see how it's going. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a thing where it's a trial it, it could provide safety for people crossing the street. It can, it can jazz up the town a little bit with some more flowers make it more welcoming and, and, and pleasant. And it may not work. Oh, and I'll be see. quite honest with you, it may not work. For me, I'd say, you know what, we're going to gather the pots and sell them on eBay or something like that because it just doesn't fit. But uh, it's something that was suggested by Dubois and King. Um, and we asked the community about it at the uh, uh, April 21st meeting. They, they it seemed to be accepted widely. Um, Let's so, hold on, Joe. If you're doing three on each side, that's 30 pots, not 60. Three on each side. Five yeah. crosswalk. That's 30 pots. No, 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 12. 12 per crosswalk. Three, three, oh. and then on the other side, of the other end of the 12. crosswalk. 12. 12 on each crosswalk. On each crosswalk. So the bump so out, five. the purpose of the bump out, hang on, the purpose of the bump out is oh. so that when people are driving, the, the, yeah, 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 yeah. I know, the yeah, pedestrian pots are going on each side. Okay. And well, so that means well, that you like need that. to, well, there's three, two three, bump six, outs. Uh, uh, we have three, an artist. Six, yeah, 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 it's oh, it's happening over oh, there. Oh, I got you. Some of them are right. And the car is good. I thought it was just math. I thought they were all grouped together on one. No, math was all strong. I didn't understand how it was laid out. Can you buy these on eBay? Oh, nice drawing. Amazon. <laughs> Would you put that on? No, we're going to have to yeah. buy them locally. <laughs> so um, these pots, is that a straight line or is it no, a they would be be triangle out. configuration? Yeah. This is, yeah. this is like for numerical purposes. Yep, yep. Right. Like <laughs> Our artists yeah. apologize for his first one. Yes, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Is this to scale? You <laughs> <laughs> get the clothes. Bomb out. Bomb out. That's what it says in the I thought it was going to say that. It is. 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 I think. It's I mean, also, it'll, also it'll the problem with that, uh, Barry, is the, is the plowing Plowing. in the winter. Is yeah. there already a problem so they with the come existing bugs? They've got to come out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. yeah. Now, what could happen is we could elaborate on them by, in some spots, actually putting benches uh, or something in between the pots that, you know, would jazz it up a little bit. But, you know, first things first, let's, let's go about this slow yeah, so first. Of the uh, 16, um, how is that apportioned to? Um, pots 
material. Uh, flower material and maintenance. Yeah, that, uh, that's all going to... Pots are $13,000. The pots all by themselves, 13000 Planted with dirt, with plants? No. no. 13000 13, just 000. for the pot. Wow. Is there a chance that we could maybe do some pricing on that? Or are they coming oh. locally? Is there a... Is that local purchase or not? No. We take it away, right? It's a wholesale. It's a wholesale. It's a wholesale. Um, In Massachusetts. And from my experience, it's the least expensive around. Um, you can always go down to, uh, uh, in, in Lebanon, uh, what's the name, the, the Valleys? No. Not Home Depot, the uh, Garden oh, Supply. Oh, Garden yeah. Supply Company. And Garden yeah. Supply, and their retail, and you're not going to, yeah. and these are, I mean, obviously we can look, but. Yeah, so they're 30 inches, so they're two and a half feet tall, so they're Yeah, I mean, we could look at small, small plants. Yeah. What are they made, they're made of? They're big. They're they're big. Plastic. Plastic. They're 216 a pot. So, yes. just, and I'm sure that this work's already been done, but I'm just going to ask. Go ahead. At, at a pot that's that high and that wide, yeah. I can't help but wonder if the road is big enough to accommodate that many pots oh, it's, it's, and the cars. It's not. We're going to make the road wider. <laughs> <laughs> See, now that makes more sense. Um, what I, 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 do we need, do we need, is it 100% confirmed oh, that it's needed, so that that many pots are needed that per bump out? Yeah. That that size works yes. for that? That's 100%. How many times are you going to say yes? Yes, 100%? Yes. Okay. Ask it again. You sure? Ask it again. Well, how, how, did, how is it? Like, did you go out and measure them? And, like, yes, and we did. Yeah. Yes, yep. we, 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 yeah, we took the information from the Blind King who have done these in a variety of communities as a test, uh, oh, most right. recently in Bethel. Bethel. But yeah. in their, in you know, in the, the report that, that they did for you, uh, that's yeah. in there. They recommended those. So somebody yeah. told me yeah. that they were shopping. Well, plot if necessary. They were shopping for parts and. Uh, most of the photos that were available online indicated that they were made in China. And purchasing directly from China, the prices on these things was half to less than half with shipping. And about to be 25% more. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Get them while yeah. we're I wonder if well. going on to like okay. Alibaba though or something would be right. a good idea. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm on know, it right now. I don't know if we need to get to the yeah. 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 of searching yeah. for the pots on the right search engine. Um, but Airbnb should be able to sell them. I just want to keep one question <laughs> sure. for the earlier yeah, meeting ahead. is um, what is the plan? So we've got these pots um, and they'll be used in the future. What is the plan for filling in? filling them and maintaining them in the f next year? The same as this year. Yeah, the, well, I will say that, I mean, I, I think we can work with the school like we are doing with our hanging baskets for next year. For this mm -hmm. year, We're and, and we don't throw that dirt away. Mm -hmm. That dirt is replanted. The residence should last pretty well. Um, yeah. And so mm -hmm. the, the pots would be stored with the, the yeah, dirt in it, in them, mm -hmm. and then is the Planted. transportation of the filled pots included in the cost? I just got to throw it out. I mean, they're yeah. heavy. You got to rent yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. lift and. Well, Ray's going to do it, so I'm not too yeah. concerned about Museums. it. Museums. Yeah. Truck. Good question. If I, first, I want to apologize that I swore earlier. <laughs> I'm, I'm still coming out of my stressful period. Mm. <laughs> but I, I'm a resident of Cambridge, Massachusetts, the People's Republic, OK? There's community streets, there's community neighborhoods, there's community things, there's community planner programs, blah, blah, blah. We've done all these planters, we've done all these things. Half of them look good, half of them don't look good. It's true, I'm a landscape person myself, I love flowers, as you can see the daily catches. They're yep. with them right now. It's a tremendous expense. But I, I understand the intent is safety, but your angle, the point between the two closest pots is how wide. Because my experience looking at the crosswalks in front of Vermont Flannel and Bentleys for six years is people don't walk in an organized, single file fashion. They cross the street with their elderly parents, they cross with carriages, they cross with dogs, they cross with canes, they cross with walkers. And. Well, you know, I can answer that. I, I don't know if this is okay. solely. I can answer that simply, simply, you know, we can't tell people where to walk. Well, that's you know, right. I mean, we can, so put, I these, see we can this put cross marks out, we that's can put correct. pop pots so, out, and they're going to choose where they want right. to go. So my, my, my interpretation is being a, a, a brick and mortar 
storefront owner for decades, is this is just adding more congestion. It's adding more congestion. And certainly, a, 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 maybe an unwarranted expense. You're competing with flowers <coughs> you're already doing. All the shop owners have stores. They all have floral designs in front of their storefronts. And now you're competing with them. So what, what, is, what is the real purpose? Do we need to keep the burden so, of more decorations? Or do you, with that uh, it's going to be organized as opposed to individual personalities, which is what makes this a quintessential village? It's a fair question, for sure. The purpose of the bump outs actually came from uh, the fact that there really are visibility issues when you're driving. When you're driving down the road and there are people who are in the crosswalk, not everybody crosses in the crosswalk, but for people who are there, it actually is really hard to see them and it, it is a little bit of an issue. And so the, the concept of the bump out came from how can we help so that the people who are trying to cross the road don't get sideswiped on the way, you know, while they're just trying to get from point A to point B. Right. So, right. Really so, hard to so it's yeah, it's really hard. Yeah. So the bump out is really, it really so truly like, is a safety so issue, like whether or not it yeah. takes four flower pots or 12, if they're six feet wide or two feet wide, that's kind of the stuff that, that we don't necessarily have the answers to at this moment, but the, the bump outs themselves, which I are, think are very well Which well are founded. on crosswalks, yes. which currently right now is a, ra a red painted pavement with white borders. Mostly gone. Mostly. Right. They'll Mostly they're gone. As opposed, visible. As opposed to so a dimpled yellow black one, which other towns have gone to. Right, they'll be in this like no parking area, not on the crosswalk. Right. So it's not gonna further constrict the crosswalk. Mm -hmm. right. And, and that's, they've been, that's this where is the delivery it. trucks swoop in mm -hmm. to park parallel to the curb. And mm -hmm. it's a time-tested strategy, and it, it is uh, less yeah. expensive than trying to right. find Bethel, some permanent Bethel solution. Bethel has, you know, 20, 20% of the traffic that the, the, other, the other thing is, is that we heard at some of this, you know, that, that signage would be better. You know, have the, the neon signs that say crosswalks here. And I, I know that we wanted Nobody to get away signs. from, that, that we don't want more signs. So this is That's one way to, right. this is one way to delineate right. so that there aren't signs, but there's, Visibility. I motion to approve. And I, and I, and I, and I understand your concern. We have a motion, motion to approve. Second. Is there a second? Okay. Second. Now we have further Third. discussion. Yeah. So as I understand it, and personally, I, I'm all for anything that trains, tames the traffic and makes the town more pedestrian friendly. But you talk about this as a trial, and I think it's important when you talk about some anything as a trial is that you have some solid metrics on which you're going to analyze that trial. Um, so could. Could that be included in, obviously not in this motion necessarily, but in the project itself that you're going to spend a substantial, um, well, I, 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 think, I, I think, you know, uh, we're going to talk in the future about accountability, and it's still probably fall in that category. Okay. Do these work? Do they not work? I just think it's important that there be a set of measurements beforehand sure. so it doesn't turn out to... Yeah. Three people complain, so oh, it's a failure. Yeah. It's not and, it. and I might add, when, as soon as this thing hit the paper, two people come up to me and thank me because they were so concerned about walking across the street from the drugstore over to Bentley's corner, and they said this is a great idea. Oh, on the table. So we have a motion second. on the table and a second. Uh, a further discussion. Uh, are these at all of the locations, or as a trial, are they at some of the locations to compare? The locations I I, I identified earlier. Yeah. I understand. Five locations. Five locations. If they are successful, yeah. would you do other locations? Uh, well, if they're necessary, probably. Like but in front I, of Grand Union, that yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Yes. Maybe. Good point. I mean, were, sure. these, were these selected as oh, the best sorry. test locations? Yeah, or yeah. what? what, what <laughs> they were the they 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 selected by the chief of police. <laughs> yeah. well, because we yeah. wanted to do College Hill, a because that's a, and he right. discounted that because it's too dangerous. narrow there. Um, so yeah, and some. And I asked him, I said, Bobby, what do you want? And he identified okay. these spots. So this is so this is not like a tr test some locations. This is all of the locations that he would would want them. Yes. Remember, DNK's no. yeah, yeah. project was meter district. Right. It right. wasn't the whole. Yeah. yeah right. 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 And so I would I, say my my uh, my father-in-law. The one thing I know he used to say was, if you pay somebody for advice, you should take it. Right. 
So. Say that all the time. Yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> that is, you know. So uh, there is a motion. There's a second. It's on the floor. Is there any further discussion in the commission? Seeing none, we'll put it to a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. I seem to have it. The eyes do have it. And that's sixteen thousand uh, dollars. The third is benches. <coughs> uh, benches uh, are going to be made of teak, and they're going to range. They're gonna, we're going to get two sizes: one five feet and one four feet. And um, they're five hundred and four hundred and seventy-nine dollars. And that does not include a plaque, which you could put on, that says sponsored by the Stock Economic Development Commission, <laughs> which will, you know, add an extra five dollars to them, but uh, that's that. very doable. <laughs> I'll pay for half of the bench and you can put sponsored by the Daily Catch. Right, exactly. Yeah, right. Yeah. I went outside the Daily Catch. Cool. So, um, they're, they're going to be used... Uh, as replacement for some of the benches now that are in pretty bad shape, particularly on the green. And um, and places right now where we don't have benches. Uh, I'd, I'd, will they replace all the existing benches? Yeah, that's my question. Um, no. I, don't, I don't think all of them. The so. green ones, on the green rickety ones that are on the green, I don't know if you're familiar with those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But those will go. Are there the any wrought iron rickety wood. benches? In the wrought iron and wood yeah. will, will stay. Okay. But well, why? Well, it, it, well, because they're 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 good and solid and heavy, and they're not. It's still still we don't want to spend any more money than we have to. If I've you take them away, is it a lot less seating? If you took those away, and you had just had these, just changes. Like if we could replace them with more of them, yeah. I mean, because there's one wrought iron one that's attached around a tree. That, has oh, right. oh, yeah. that people use all the time. Yeah. Right, but I thought that I thought in the discussion there was, in fact, wasn't it Anna who was at least she spoke, and there may not have been a unanimity around this about a pallet and basically some consistency um, uh, oh. in terms of the design of the re of the things that, of the benches in particular, the furniture. So yeah, John, it's a good point, but you know. We didn't feel good about throwing away stuff that was still good. It's still usable. So, you know, uh, put all that stuff in the Well, this could also be something. You could also, we could also fund this right now, see right. how it looks. Right. If, mm -hmm. it, if it looks it's visually true. obtrusive, mm -hmm. buy more benches to replace the thing. Like, if yeah. we yeah. decide right. that that's a good, that the visual right. impact mm -hmm. is more important than yeah. the waste of the right. money incurred by throwing away benches that's really good. And then, and then again, these we could move them. We could yeah, could we move them maybe? You know, exactly. maybe yeah. there's a place so that it but doesn't strikes me as kind of like interfere with when we get to And it. then again, these are the ones that were uh, voted uh, mm -hmm. the most for approval by the community when we had that 21st meeting. And they're mm -hmm. sustainable teak. Teak, yeah. So sustainable teak. sustainable like forest. A couple of other questions. Uh, so if you look at the total number of benches yep. we've got, and what's the total number we're buying here? 14. 14 benches. What's the total number of benches? Any idea? That we have in town. Already? Yeah. Right. You mean, oh, we did so, so it, like in other words, if we replace the ones there. that we want to replace, what would we be left with? How many left? Yeah. Seven That's on the green. Seven on the green. That's a trick question. And then, you know, we had <laughs> purple. <Yeah>. Two <laughs> Bentleys that those were bent there. Owned. Yeah. And so and, the, and those are used all the time. There's only one remaining. The other one was a piece of shit bought for Home Depot, yeah. two hundred eighty dollars. <laughs> and I already <laughs> researched benches, <laughs> and the only How one do you I would buy you, you, you uh, <laughs> Did you so get that shit pot? <laughs> Did you get that pot? It's, it's on the record. It's, it's on the record. The new benches <laughs> are not new benches. You're always better repairing the old benches, hiring a local tradesman that can make the new wood slats and repurposing the existing iron, which is real metal, as opposed to fake metal, or fake wood, or fake plastic, well, et cetera, et cetera. None of, none of those are fake. These, it's all right deep. these yeah, prices for $500 or $600 a bench, those are wholesale prices, right? Yes. Okay, so that's these are these are what we would what that's I would what consider to be an $1,100 or $1,200 bench. Yes, okay. absolutely. Because yeah. yeah. otherwise, yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. go down, yeah, yeah, that's go, go, to, go to all deck yeah. down the price for all the No, I'm sure. I, 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 yeah, I just want to make sure that $500 yes. isn't going to get you. All right, I need to accept this. No. These, these are the last 20 years. I make a motion Michael, to accept the benches. Michael Mallick already did. I second, so second the motion to accept the benches. Uh, all right, so we have a, a competition for you to get that 
Michael. Moving. Michael. Mika. Michael. Michael and Mika. All right, so we do have a motion on the floor in a second. Uh, do we have any further discussion on the benches? One question? Yes. Uh, I've asked it before. Uh, when we first talked about uh, the revitalization study, we talked about any new um, purchases fitting into a overall palette that was something that the village and the town um, agree on. Has, has this been evaluated that way? I mean, they're nice benches, but um, these, I think these it's important These were chosen to ask the by the people that came to the community? Well, what I see is okay. they're chosen by eight of the 3,000 people that live in Woodstock. Well, they were chosen by eight of the ones who were interested in it. I understand. My question right. was, my yeah. question was, okay, and it will, it the answer is going to be, Hang tomorrow on, night is, is the trustees finish. meeting, and the presentation will be made at the trustees for the approval. Now, if they disapprove it, of course, we won't get it. But so there Your has not been, yeah, so the question was, has it been, were they considered within an overall uh, Woodstock pallet? Um, that was agreed to by it, by the village and the town. It sounds like the answer is no. It has not. No, so recommended a study that type of bench. It was one of them. Okay. <laughs> so the, it's it's a good question as to who has responsibility for the overall right, look right. and feel of the village, and isn't that the design review board? I part of the study, right? DNK study. Should have pointed that out. I don't you know. know. You know, boy, I tell you this, Charlie. Again, I, I hate to be redundant, but there's, there was this issue of time. And we got hooked into doing different things, and things got kicked back and kicked back. My repeated question to Jack Rossi, who is a design review board member, are we going to have any problems with this with design review? Should we go now and talk to him? He said, they're not meeting now. By the time we get there meet, we're going to go through another cycle. He says, if, this is, quote, if you guys approve it, if the trustees approve it, I can't see you anywhere in the world. They, they won't buy into it. Well, and, and I get that. And that's you know good that Jack voiced that. I, so, I, could, I, I mean, tell you it's a question of time again, Charlie. You know, we, if we right. want to, we can, we can sit around and we can go through another round of board meetings and design review and ask more questions from a lot of people. And maybe in 2020, we might get this thing done. How long but is another cycle? It's a wonderful process. Well, we always, yeah, oh, yeah. we, always fun. we did invite those mm -hmm. members to the public hearing. But were they aware that a decision would be made from that public hearing that would directly, that would result in a tangible product being implemented without any oversight from other town board meetings. I can't. I just, I, I, I don't I know. Speak to that. I don't know. I, I, I don't mean, think that it was. Really I didn't attend the meeting in part because I was not, uh, I did not think that the decisions, I thought it was, uh, I thought it of it as an informational meeting. Okay. And Isn't it uh, enough for us to just say this is what we, we're willing to fund and we're willing to do and here Let trustees, them figure do, it out. do you want to do it or don't you? Thank you, Larry. It's, yeah, I mean, this is, it could take years to pick a bench. Mm -hmm. I mean, I that might just ask, can we just try and kind of, or can somebody just try and keep track of like, okay, don't forget, this is the bench we chose. This is the light we chose. This is the, the you know, whatever we chose. And can we make sure that there are pictures of those that are all together in one place so that somewhere down the road, as this is, becomes a little more complicated and more and more things are getting picked out, there's a, a reference place where you can say, oh, but, that but does not work. I also, I, I don't want the EDC to be the board no. that I, and I'm not saying that's us. made the aesthetic decisions right. for no. the town. Right. But, I don't but, think that's our role, right. and I don't think that's our place. But it's just to make no, sure that it, that exactly. does flow Does that out. exist? Does it, it that does, it document does exist. exist somewhere? It, well, it exists in the sense that the design review board does review all of these things with that in mind when they're reviewing. And so if this is street furniture, I believe it has to get approved by design review, I suggest that you just approve it That's all with the design done. review That's that as long as they, but, but, yeah. but pending, the pending the design, design review, review approval. That's, that's, yeah. that's what Larry suggested. I but think it's a good idea. I didn't yeah. Yeah. But I mean, but I'll what? just say, sorry, but you know, well, if you guys will pay for it, we'll approve it. Doesn't no, make, no, doesn't no, instill like a lot not. of confidence. To that's right. that's, that's not. their problem. That's Then we need a new design review board. I don't disagree that it doesn't instill confidence. If I was if someone was going out talking about the EDC like that, yeah, that right. would bother me. Right. But that, 
That's yeah. not what's happening? No, 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 it may be what's happening, but it's not our... It, 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 we've got to let the design review board deal with that problem. Again, problem. Again, okay. no again okay. and not to be redundant, and I guess I am going to be redundant. It's a time thing. If this thing hadn't... Wait a minute, let me finish. If it hadn't get pushed back month after month after month, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Design review would have seen us six times. We would have gone through every commission, every board there was, but we can do that, and we can still do that if you want to wait till next year before we get this thing done. I and all I'll tell you is that that's never a reason. It's all right, exactly. never all right. a good reason Commission. to move forward. Commission, so. uh, there's a lot to be said, and we can say that after we adjourn. Okay. Mm -hmm. Unless it's I substantive agree. to the decision. No. Okay. okay. Great. So are we vote? implicitly endorsing this design by approving this application? No, we, we are approving the seven thousand dollars for the purchase of benches. So benches. Pending the, is the Here. verbiage in the motion? Pending, Pending the approval <coughs> of the design review. Board. Design review right. board approval. Okay. Right. Okay. That is the motion. For all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. The ayes seem to have it. The ayes do have it. Okay. And if you approve. Three different grant requests. And do you Great want one. a flat? <coughs> do you want your ah. name? Ah. No, no, no. We've got a motion to five thousand dollars. Oh, sure, because that's the answer. The answer is being motion to adjourn the meeting. May I have those items again? All those hands on guys, we have approval. Motion to adjourn the meeting. Is there a second? Second. 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 Second.